That's ten thousand dollars, Connor. Ha <laughs> yeah! ha! Yeah! 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 This show is not for sharpshooters. This show is a fucking machine gun. There's no chewy center to this show. It's all hard candy. This show is not a sniper on a fucking roof. This show is a drone taking out a village. Do not invite me into your house because I will come in and I will wreak fucking havoc. Hey, what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. And that's an intro that I give every week. I don't know why I need to anymore because we are in year six. If you're coming here, if you're here now, you know that this is Mike Schmidt. You know this is the 40 year old boy podcast because you clicked play. Do you, is there a play button? Is there a play button on the iTunes? I don't even know if there is. Uh, here's how you do not want to start a podcast. Let me tell you this, folks. Here's how you don't want to do it. You don't want, you don't want to come to your producer's house and sit down, and then she looks at you and she goes, are you ready to do this yet? <laughs> and then you look at her and you go, yeah, I guess. And then she points at you and off we go. And you uh, let go of the reins and you let the horses run and you let the bees fly. Uh, and then the bees sting the horses and everything fucking goes to hell. Oh, my God. Let me tell you, that's why this show is going to be terrible because the bees are stinging the horses. You may hear whinnying. You may hear buzzing. Uh, you may hear buzzing and whinny, whinny uzzing. Oh, my God. What if I had horse bees? Holy shit. You know what? That's the problem. The bees in my head are the size of horses because I got a giant skull, folks. My Uzi weighs a ton. I will not lie to you. I have a gigantic size eight hat, size eight head. Um, here's a story. I was at work the other day. Uh, I work at a barbecue house because I'm a failure. And, uh, oh, and also I will tell you this. I learned this today. Let me tell you this really quick. Uh, I am learned. I, I learned I'm not a failure. That's what I was told at least by several people as I told them that I was a failure <laughs> and they were like, no, you're not. Uh, and then they give you that. Uh, I love it. Here's the thing is I love when people run down the litany of things that explain to you why you're not a failure. And then you hear them and you go, yeah, you're right. I guess I'm not. And then you counteract it with like this blizzard of things that prove that you are a failure in your head. And they're like, that doesn't matter. Everybody has those things. You go, I don't give a fuck. I care about me. I don't care about anybody else. Listen to these terrible things. And they go, yeah, I have those. Everybody has those. Everybody has those things happen. Setbacks happen. You climb out of the pit. You make it happen. You grab the reins. You let the horses pull you out before the bees sting them, of course. The horses still have to trust you while this is all happening. Uh, so you harness the bees and you grab the reins and you let the horses pull you out of the pit. And then you unleash the bees and then they sting the horses and you live your life and you don't be a failure anymore. And uh, and I go, haha, just by saying that, you admit that I was a failure and I'm not a failure anymore. And they go, that's all semantics and language. I put it to you, Greg. Is this not an indictment of our very own educational system itself? <laughs> And then Lily and I stood up and we hummed the national anthem. We walked right out of the courtroom. That's, right. That's it. No more Delta. You're finished. You're through. Uh, so, yeah. So, I, uh, you know, I, I, I wind up in a death spiral. I wind up in a little bit of a spin. And I should tell you this. So I'm, I, I, let me give you this speech that I had. I had a discussion with a guy uh, whose circumstances are kind of like mine. I don't want to get fully into it. But there's a guy who's kind of got the same thing going on that I have. And, uh. And we were commiserating and we were bitching about stuff because that's what you know you do when you're in a parking lot and you're inactive and you're not doing the things you're supposed to be doing. And so, uh, and by the way, I am not Jay and Silent Bob. I don't know why that sounded <laughs> fucking weird. <laughs> Look, I'm in a fucking parking lot outside of the gas and sip. That's what I'm doing. And I can tell you that Joe lies. Joe lies when he cries. If you guys know so much about love, why are you outside of the gas and sip? By choice. All right. Um, yes, I combined two different parking lot movies there. You're lucky I don't go uh, heavy metal parking lot on you. And I start asking questions about Judas Priest. Um, so I'm talking to this dude and he's uh, and we're kind of talking back and forth. And we're going and I go, I go, I go, you know, why am I even bitching about this, dude? I'm fucking 46. I'm a failure. I deliver fucking coleslaw for a goddamn living. It's terrible. And he goes, well, hey, he goes, don't say that. I go, what do you mean? He goes, oh, you can't say that. And I go, no, it's, I go, I go, I don't really feel that way, but I, sometimes I really feel that way. I'm like, I'm a fucking, you know, I'm 46. I should be doing better. My fucking marriage fell apart. But I mean, there are great things that are happening and I need to look at those, but inevitably sometimes you fall into a fucking dark pit and you're there for just like five minutes and then you pull yourself out of it, you know, but, but initially you're like, God damn it, I'm a fucking failure. And then you wind up winding yourself up and getting pissed. And this is why I'm seeing a person and I'm talking to her every fucking week and I'm trying to get to the bottom of why I feel those things. And, and Everybody feels those things, but I'm trying to figure out why I, I, they show up all the time. And then I, you know, and again, they're not there for long because I, I have friends who have genuinely told me that like, they've considered suicide. They've considered killing themselves or things like that. And I just go, I have no touchstone for anything to talk to you about with that because that's never come to mind for me. I've never even said, well, fuck, I'm so out of it, so down, so, so crushed, so defeated that, that that would even be an option. I'm moving forward. I'm a fucking shark. Uh, I might be moving in circles, but who the fuck knows? I have no idea. And I might be a shark carrying a goddamn bag full of potato salad, but I'm still a goddamn shark.
Uh, so I'm talking to my friend. So again, I, what I'm saying is that it will get bleak for a minute or two. And then I go, hey, look, something shiny. You know, I mean, everything's OK. Um, but I was like, yeah, fuck it. I go, you know, if I'm going to bitch about that, that's ridiculous. I'm far, The whole bottom line is I'm 46 and I deliver coleslaw and I'm a fucking failure. And the guy looks at me and he goes, well, don't say that. He goes, because, you know, if you're a failure, then I'm a failure. And, and, you know, that's terrible. And I just went, I got news for you. <laughs> oh, you didn't. If the goddamn failure had fits, you better put it on your gigantic fucking skull, sir, because <laughs> don't expect me to pull you out of your fucking slump. I mean, I got my own slump to worry about. But then you're like, oh, dude, if you're a failure, I'm a failure. Well, guess what? I, I have terrible fucking news. <laughs> Because I tell you what, you've got kids. You're more of a goddamn failure than I am at this point because I at least only have to worry about myself. I have to fucking go ahead and take care of myself. You've got to raise kids and send them to college and all that bullshit on the fucking sauce-based economy we're working in. So, I mean, no offense. I, I've got enough trouble lifting myself out of the pit with the horses and the bees. You go ahead and get your own shit taken care of and don't ask me to make you feel better about the way things are going because I can't do that. I have to do it for myself. Um... And I'm great. I'm fine. Things are great. Like I said, it's just you, you wind up in those moments of bleakness, those moments where you're just you, you look and you're like, maybe if I drove into a wall, that would be OK. And then you go, nah, I can't drive into a wall because then I would inevitably miss the wall or something bad would happen. <laughs> I'm not good at finality. I'm not good at taking care. You know what I mean? There would be some sort of weird chain reaction. I would drive into the wall and my car would be fine and the building would collapse and kill 80 nuns. And everybody would be like, you dumb fuck, you killed 80 nuns. I'm like, I didn't mean to. I was just trying to take care of my own business. Well, guess what you just did? What's black and white and red all over? <laughs> that fucking building you just crashed in because 80 nuns are under that roof. <laughs> it's just a fucking cloud of cinder block dust and fucking ghosts going to heaven. Holy shit. <laughs> I want to end the show. I, God damn it. What's black and white and red all over? That building you just smashed into. God damn I have to end the show on that. You guys can get me at motherfucker. <laughs> oh man we have a sponsor this week <laughs> should go ahead and mention that we have a sponsor this week folks uh you know because he said make sure you squeeze me in right after the deaths of the nuns so i said all right i can handle that at least i thought i could <laughs> um our sponsor is spencer spencer the sponsor he's a good guy a nice guy and i think i've mentioned him in previous weeks like this guy contacted me I think in year two, I think he wanted to get on board in year two. And I've been, I've been trading emails with him and by trading emails, I mean, ignoring his and never answering and sending one at all, at all. Uh, he kept writing me and he's like, dude, I want to sponsor the show. There's some stuff I got, there's some ideas. And in my head, I was like, why would I ever take a dime from you for sponsoring the show, Spencer? I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not a mercenary for fuck's sake. I like to get my money the old fashioned way. I like to hand you a plate of pork and then have you hand me $5. That's how I like to earn my living. I like for you to press on a blanket right into my sauce stained fucking hand. That's how I like to make my fucking fortune five sticky dollars at a goddamn time. Uh, so I avoided Spencer. I will not lie to you. Spencer wrote me and he wrote me on Facebook. And, uh, and by the way, Facebook is great. All right, so he uh, he wrote me, I can't, I don't know what to do about Facebook. I really don't. It's just, I actually, I told somebody this week, I said, it is an amazing, it, I've never hated something more that I love in my life because I am I just can't stop. I'm in it and I'm looking at stuff and I'm, I'm and then I write jokes and I don't think they get enough. And then I, re, other people make jokes and I try to, I, it's just, dude, it's, I just, I, and I wind up, I check it all the fucking time. And you know what? Fuck Max and fuck Jill for making fun of me and saying, oh, he's always on his phone and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, we're all the world is on its phone the entire world is on its goddamn phone right right yeah. okay uh I, that probably came out harsher than i wanted it to i would imagine i don't mean i don't mean fuck megs and fuck jill they're all great and i love them both but i mean but still they take pictures of me and post them and i go oh, look he's on his phone again and i'm like god damn it uh and then i immediately go to my phone and i type a response um <laughs> And, and you know what's funny? I have, my hand, I have my phone in my hand as I'm saying all of this. I do. I truly do. Because Spencer, the sponsor, contacted me through Facebook, and that's where the copy is. Um, what? Yes. Well, I mean, Did he email you a copy? He, Spencer doesn't. Well, he, you know what? All right, let's put it this way. This is really on Spencer, the sponsor, because he's tried to get a hold of me many different ways. I mean, he... <laughs> He's emailed me. He's texted me. He may have Twittered me. I don't know. There may be something on flues.com from him for me. 
I think Spencer, the sponsor, joined LinkedIn just to get me to be linked in with him in some way, just so he can tell me about this fucking idea. And I have refused constantly. I have stiff armed him. I have Heisman him. I have fucking Earl Campbell him. I have Bo Jackson him. He's Brian Bosworth and I'm Bo Jackson. And I just fucking ran him right the fuck over. Seriously, there's nothing I can do about it. You know who he is? He's Mike Singletary and I'm the fridge in the Super Bowl. And I just fucking blasted him and sent him spinning off into the distance. None of this makes sense to anybody, but I don't care. Oh, and by the way, I want to throw this out to my friend Chuck. Our, we have a listener named Chuck who's a good guy. And uh, Chuck on Twitter, he's like, dude, can we get some wrestling talk this week because the Ultimate Warrior died? And uh, no, Chuck, we can't. All right, so Spencer the sponsor. Well, no, I don't mean I don't mean that in a mean way. It's just I mean that that shit has to come up kind of organically because it's like if I'm talking about wrestling, then I'll talk about wrestling fucking forever. And I don't care about the Ultimate Warrior. He was this fucking psycho because war- that's the thing, dude. Wait, the Ultimate Warrior. Talk? Well, why not? Because I can't just do that to Chuck and tell him no. Um, because the Ultimate Warrior died this week, and and it was our last week. Right, but and it was the fucking craziest thing because. Uh, the Ultimate Warrior is a psychopath. I mean, he just was. He he was a, a he went crazy. He bought into who his character was, and he became like even in real life, he was not Jim. He was always Warrior. That was his whole deal. But then, as he got older, he kind of separated himself from it. And he would be when he was Jim, he would be Jim. Then he had to put like face paint on and become Warrior. And just just, I mean, he's a crazy crazy person. And the the scariest thing is he had like a wife and kids in a normal life. But then when he would give these speeches and stuff, he tried to be a, like a politician for a while. He was going to be a politician. Then he, he hated queers. It was like, just a fucking, just a bad dude. So like when he died, they give him like a 21 bell salute or whatever the fuck. And all the people go out there with t-shirts on and masks and like warrior and they're chanting his name. And I'm just watching it. And I'm just going, this guy pretended to hit people for a living. And everybody's like sad. And I, I mean, I guess... I guess I just didn't see the point. I didn't see, and, and uh, look, and maybe the warrior meant a lot to Chuck. I don't look. I don't, and I don't want to out Chuck as, an old, as a closet, closet warrior fan, uh, because quite frankly, if he's a closeted warrior fan, the warrior didn't care much for him. Because I don't know if you know this, the warrior didn't care for queers. He made it very evident in several speeches that he gave. Um, and and uh, and I will say this too. Let's talk about that for just a second. On Facebook, um, there will be pictures of me that go up. You know what I mean? Where and I'm, I've lost a ton of weight. You know. Um, who did I just see that was shocked? By- oh, oh, I'll tell this story. All right, fuck. I, uh, I was out delivering food the other day and, uh, and an order came in and, uh, uh can I, can I, I can tell this story, right? Cause I talk about Chaz Bono. Why not? I'll tell this story. Uh, and this is a friend of mine, so it doesn't matter. But, uh, I, I've, um, you know, I delivered food to Lily once, you know what I mean? And then, uh, and then episode 36, Finn, there was the, uh, the Pardo incident, which you all know about. Um, and then I, uh. I got a phone call this week and the name, I knew the name was phony on the ticket because uh, I just kind of know a lot about pop culture. So when I saw the name, I go, that's a fake name. Whoever the fuck that is, is using a fake name. So hopefully, because it, it sets off like alarm bells in my head because it was a, it was an order over a hundred bucks. Um, it was like 120 bucks and they put a great tip on it. You know what I mean? Because they ordered, they, they, they prepaid though. So I know I wasn't going to get fucking shivved um because they used like e24 or chow now or one of those fucking things which by the way are great oh my god those are so great the best part is they give people the op- the option of tipping 10 percent on a 20 dollar tab oh you people are so cool all right so and i shouldn't care again i should not care but this is kind of the talk this is now we're in the parking lot with me and that dude this is the discussion i had <laughs> um lily and i just sat down and we broke this down before the fucking show and i'm telling her i'm like oh, you're not you're not listening to me and she goes no you're wrong and here's why and she's right she's absolutely right but i'm just i'm just fuming and then she's trying to explain it to me and i couldn't see any of the numbers on her spreadsheet because there was steam coming out of my ears and it got in front of my eyes and i'm just like the bottom line is i don't have any money i don't have any goddamn money and then i immediately went out and slapped a nun um, but I think we can all agree as to what happened to the other nuns. That nun got off light. The nun I took a poke at is fucking happy right now because right now there's 80 dead ones f- swimming around my head going, dude, why did you crash into that building? And I said, fuck, I didn't know the Murano was so fucking tough. It's not built Ford tough. It's built Nissan tough. And Nissan doesn't build tough stuff. Those people are fucking not building tough trucks. Are they? Well, there's the Nissan. What is that one? The Titan? What the fuck does Nissan make? I, dude, I parked next to it one time in the goddamn parking lot, and I got out, and it was this gigantic truck. It's just right next to my Murano, and my Murano's big. It's like, you know, it's kind of a mid-range SUV, but I fucking parked, and I got out, and there was this truck that was next to me that blotted out the sun. It looked like a trap while a coyote set for a fucking roadrunner. It was so weird looking. And I'm like, who the fuck drives that in a city? What the fuck are you moving? You know what? The only reason to have that fucking giant truck in a city is so you can put the city in it and move it to another fucking city. That's a big fucking truck. God damn it. There's not a garage in the world that would hold it. I can't even imagine, and especially in this town, because, dude, you go to park anywhere, and there's fucking compact spots. That's all it is is compact spots. I was just in Florida. 
And I, I was talking to my stepdad, and I go, dude, these Florida spots, and Jill, too, I said, these Florida spots are amazing because they it's all old people who can't fucking park, so they give them just a like a city block to pull their fucking giant Cadillac or Buick into because that's all they fucking drive out there. It's literally Cadillacs and Buicks. That's it. And, and like, what is that? What's the LTD, the Ford LTD? Have you seen one of those in forever? No, you haven't because they're all in goddamn Florida carting around the dead. I mean, it is just every car in Florida is a hearse. It just doesn't know it yet. What a fucking mess that town is. And yes, I just called Florida a town. Holy shit. I think I talked about it last week. I went to some fucking bar. You know, I went to the salad bar with Dan, and he's like, it's a great salad bar. I'm like, dude, it's just salad in a, in a on a long table. That's all it is. And I mean, but good for you, and I'm glad you like it. And then it's just walkers and wax beans. That's what the whole fucking town is, goddammit. Walkers and wax beans. Fuck Florida. I hope my mom doesn't listen to this. My mom is not listening. I think I said, I remember saying she's like, it's so long. She just asked me on the phone because I called to check on her today. And by the way, she's doing very well, I guess. She's fine. And, um, oh, I, I think, I don't know. I can't, you know, I don't know the vibe. I, because I, it's that thing where she'll be like telling me stuff. And then I'll talk to Dan and he's like, yeah, I'll call you later. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, but my mom seems to be fine. She seems okay. So, uh, so I'm, I'm on the phone with her today and she's, uh, she's telling me about what the fuck is going on in Florida and all the stuff that's happening. And then she's like, Hey, uh, did you do a show last week? I said, my, I do a show every week. And she said, Oh yeah. Cause I was going to try to find it on my phone and I was going to try to get it. And I go, Oh, you're not going to like it. And she goes, what did you say about me? I go, no, you're not going to like it. It's over three hours. You're going to, yeah, that's a thing. It's like, you don't, that's not, she goes, Oh, stop. I was just, I was just telling her, but I can't believe the kid don't shut up. And I go, mom, the kid, you don't have to call me the kid on the phone. I'm well aware that I'm the kid and I'm well aware that I won't shut up. Have you heard about the nuns I killed? And she's going to go, no, I heard about the nun you slapped. Well, because we tried to hush up the killing incident. All right. So, by the way, if you don't name your band the killing incident, never listen to my show again. Better yet, if you don't name your band the nun killing incident, do not listen to the show ever again. Year seven is not for you. I may change the name of the show to the nun killing incident. I may. I just may. Um, what the fuck was I talking about? There was something. I don't have a what? You're supposed to be taking the notes. You went, uh, there, there were so many dots in there. It's a constellation I can't put together. Bees. That's like... a goddamn swarm, baby. Irwin Allen produced this fucking show. Right now, Irwin Allen is going, yep, there's the sequel. That's what happens when you unleash the bees, folks. Because I've been sitting here restrained. I've been sitting here not knowing what to say. I've been I've been looking at Lily and going, I don't know what to do. I got nothing, man. I got I get just fucking tied up. My brain is in a fucking hog tie. Yes. We were talking about your sponsor. Yeah, we Spencer the sponsor. About the warrior. Then we were talking about not talking about wrestling. Then we were talking about wax beans and walkers. Okay. Then we were talking about your mom. Yes. Then we were talking about the podcast. Right. Oh, parking spots, dude. <laughs> No, I think I said all I needed to say about parking spots. Big. They're gigantic in Florida. Holy God. You know why? Because it's when they're not parking spots, people stretch a hammock across them and just get a nap. <laughs> you think they siesta in Mexico? Goddamn, Florida is just a walking nap. That whole town is a goddamn <laughs> walking nap. <laughs> Everybody is just waiting to nod off. I'm surprised there's not a Z in Florida. It's, it's spelled with silent three Zs. That's how Florida is spelled. <laughs> the whole fucking town of Florida is spelled with silent Zs because they are just fucking walking naps. Waiting, waiting to drop off. Oh, man. What a mess. Holy shit, Florida. And it's so funny because then right in the middle of Florida, there's like South Beach, which is just literally just fucking in the streets. It's not in the middle of Florida. Maybe not. But all, but it's like California because, you know, you're like, dude, everybody's like, dude, California's totally Hollywood and it's just the land of fruits, nuts and flakes. And I'm like, dude, if you drive five miles north of Hollywood, you're 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 in Iowa with palm trees. That's it. <laughs> People wonder why there's like, oh, oh, conservatism is, you know, they think it's all liberals out here. Dude, fuck that. It's San Francisco and Los Angeles and then literally conservatives and Mexicans in a standout border war. That's all that's happening all over the rest of the fucking state. It's oranges and lemons and racism. That's what we have here, which sounds a lot like Florida, quite frankly. Um, all right. So, uh, so Spencer, the sponsor, contacted me and he's like, dude, I totally want to sponsor your show. And I'm like, dude. That doesn't sound like a good idea at all. Um, I thought it was a good idea. Dude, I, wait, there had to be something else we were talking about, right? We were talking about Warrior. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Ha! I was going to talk about the fact that when I lost weight, all these pictures of me went up on, online. And people took, there were photos of me that went up. And, uh, and this, this happens all the time. Uh, 
people will say, what? You made a delivery and you got the tip with the fake name. Okay, that's exactly where we're going. Let's talk about that for now. Uh, so I saw it was going to be a fake name. Oh, wait a minute. What's so the pictures that go up of me, dude? Uh, people will, people will always write, because I was, remember I was talking about how the warrior hates queers? Yeah. All right, because online, people will say, dude, you look fucking amazing. And I don't mean that in a gay way. Like, people will write that on photos of me. And I went, I, I go, I want to go, you you don't have to qualify it. I, I know you didn't mean it in a gay way, because I don't even know what meaning it in a gay way means. Because honestly, if you're going to tell me I look amazing, I want you to say that in a gay way. I absolutely want that. I don't want in a fucking old 80-year-old aunt pinching my cheeks and telling me I look amazing way. Fuck that. I want you to bone me. I want you to want me. I want you to want me. I need you to need me. I'd love you to love me. I'm begging you to beg me. I'll put on a brand new shirt. Look, didn't I... Didn't I... Didn't I see you crying? No, no, no. Listen, didn't I... Didn't I... Didn't I see you crying? Didn't our love just make you feel like dying? <laughs> didn't I... Didn't I, didn't I see you crying? <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, tell me you love me in a gay way. That's fine. I got no problem with that. It doesn't mean I'm going to come to your house for a date. You know, you realize that, right? I mean, you can tell me that I look good and I will not knock on your door holding flowers wearing a bow tie. Check that. I may knock on your door holding flowers wearing a bow tie. That may happen. But it doesn't mean you have to go through with it. Just because you said you liked me in a gay, and you thought it in a gay way, it doesn't mean that you have to be gay for that purpose. But it happens with every photo. There will be one guy who will just come in and go, dude, you look fucking great. No, I'm not gay. Well, I didn't think you were gay. You can tell me I look great because you know what? I fucking look great. <laughs> All right. Uh, not, not as great as I want to look. I still want to look better. But then getting to that, here's this. Uh, I knew it was a fake name on the order. I totally knew it was when I saw it. And I'm like, all right, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen here. Because I will tell you this. I'm, I'm going to tell this story. Um, let's talk about this for just a second. I, I delivered, well, shush, don't laugh at me. I, well, no, actually do laugh at me, please. Um, Spencer, the sponsor, by the way, you know what he sponsored this week? You know what his product is? Nonsense. He's doing very well. No doubt. <laughs> Spencer is selling digressions. So guess what? <laughs> That's all I'm bringing you. Um, so, uh. All right, this story I got to dance around a little bit. Uh, I delivered food to a huge celebrity, and uh, and I and the celebrity. Uh, you know, there's no real payoff to this story. You know the story. Should I tell it? I, yeah. I because I, you know what I've delivered a ton of food to a ton of different people. Like I I, I was talking about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I should tell the rich people story. I should talk about that. I deliver to rich people all the fucking time. <laughs> Um, but I mean, but I mean, I delivered to super rich people. I delivered to fucking psychotically rich people and it, and it was a, a mess. Well, but, or, cause look, I delivered to famous people and I've delivered to rich people and I look, I'll deliver anywhere. Travis barbecue goes anywhere. I know you don't think they will. <laughs> Some people won't even take Texas beef ribs. Don't matter to me. Don't matter to me. Oh my God. This is a man who stood up. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> that'll make a lot more sense in a couple of weeks. All right. So, um, no, no, see, there's so many. There's so many things. I got to harness these bees. I got I to gotta put them in order, right? I got to have these. You know what I need? A bee abacus. I need like an abacus with bees so I can slide bees over when I've talked about that particular bee. That's what I need to do. Or actually, dude, we need a jar full of bees and then we need, and have another jar to put on top and then have one bee like flying. Like, you know, oh my God, dude, you know what we fucking need? We need those lotto machines. You know those goddamn lotto machines where they're like, all right, what's the number for today? And like a zero comes up and then a nine. We need that, but with bees. Dude, what if we had those fucking machines that they have for the daily game? You ever see that? It's like 6.59 at night and you're watching like, Hey, here's the daily numbers. And it's a three digit number fucking box thing. And then they go and a ping pong ball comes up and it's like, there's a four. We need that with bees and it'll be stories. Holy shit. We got to put that together for stage. That's for the fucking live tour. What if we had a fucking, cause I was, I actually thought about putting on like a spinning wheel and then you kind of ganked it for your, your wheel of burlesque. You can borrow my wheel. Have fun traveling with that. That's the thing is I, that's the whole point. No, I would need, look, I need the fans to get behind me and build wheels for my towns. All right. So that's what I need. I need all of you. I need, who's good with crafts. I need. Every town, I need a wheel of bees, and I need it built, goddammit. Yes, let's do 
So when I show up, you show up with the Wheel of Bees, and I'll tell you what, I'll even let you choose the stories to put on the Wheel of Bees, and then we'll fucking spin it, and I get to tell that story live. Because that was, that was an idea I had, where it was going to be... Dude, I've had a hundred, like a hundred ideas. I told you I had the he said, he said story. Did I, and it's actually, it's actually a possibility now with Lenny. Oh, Did I tell that story? Wonderful. Um, you told me. I don't know if you've told the bees. Oh, okay. <laughs> let's, let's talk about that for a second. That's one of the bees. No, <laughs> no I must have told people that, I right? Up. I you gave up. Why? Pen to papers down. Stop I, that. There's 19 topics right now. I, I'm lost. I'll be coming to you for all of them. Yeah, I am. Um, you know what? Spencer, the sponsor again, he sponsored Confusion. So, all right. So, <laughs> um... <laughs> Anyway, because that was an idea I had where it was going to be he said, he said. And like there would be stories like uh, it, it blossomed into the story I told in the one man show and that's on the big angry. But it was it was going to be. Oh, by the way, somebody uh, uh, who out there ordered. A, there's a woman in Santa Rosa, Sabrina, Sabrina in Santa Rosa. You ordered a CD this week and I sent it. But I got to tell you this bullshit story because um, she's in Santa Rosa. So she's close. But every time I send it, I send a first class mail with a tracking number because I don't want it to get fucking lost. Um, oh, because you know why? Fuck, here's the thing. I cannot fuck the Postal Service because I'll tell you what. I, I, look, I love Jill I, and, I, and I don't know why she's so far away from me all the time. So I have to send her things. And why does it turn into the goddamn Batan death march to get her a fucking product? I can't send her anything. It's fucking ridiculous. There's always a controversy. There's always a fucking mess. And then I wind up on the phone having to explain to her that I didn't fuck this up. But I look like the biggest fuck up. I don't even know how she still stayed around. I don't. I... <laughs> I can't get the woman a gift to save my fucking life. Anytime I try to buy her something or send it to her, it turns into a goddamn circus. Fuck middlemen. I'm tired of them. And you know what? Fuck Sunday. If we're going to talk about that, let's talk about that for just a second. Fuck Sunday. Because I work on Sunday. I drive a double. And it's down by the beach. And it's all skateboarders and people in fucking capri pants. And they're staring in the sky. And they won't get out of my fucking way. And then there's people driving. And they're all basking in the sun because they're out for their one day of fucking week where they're not chained to their horrible fucking job. And they're letting the fucking ocean breeze drift through their car. And they're driving slow. And look, I got to get people some fucking beans. Get out of my fucking way. Sunday is for lollygaggers and okie doggers. Pull the fuck over. Give me Monday any day of the week, preferably on Sunday. Give me Monday on Sunday. I want two Mondays a week. Yeah, that's right. Saturday, Monday, Monday. You know what? The mamas and the papas should be in charge of the calendar. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Took a second? You're fucking brilliant. Took a second. All right. Um... That's not bad on the fly, right? I'm fucking awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Spencer, the sponsor. Wait, wait, no. We, we were talking about something else. What else were we talking about? Um, I was just talking about... Oh, what did I, oh, oh, fuck. Oh, dude. Deliveries and deliveries. Well, first let's do this. Sabrina. Really? Sabrina in Santa Rosa. Uh, <laughs> I sent her a CD. And I sent it with, uh, you know, with the address and, and all that stuff. And I had a first class... Uh, mail and then also the tracking number but i all i had to do was send her the one cd because she ordered it and i wanted to get it out to her quickly so i go to the post office and it's my own fault because this was monday and i had a tough monday things happened monday that i shouldn't i don't you don't want to hear about but that's one of the things that i, I was thought i was a failure for was earlier today because something that happened on monday still playing in my brain um well let's talk about that for a second all right on monday i was there and uh I'm in my apartment. I'm never in my apartment because I'm usually working. And you know I love Monday. As I just mentioned, I'd rather have two Mondays a week. Uh, but on this particular Monday, my, it was actually my second Monday of the week because the previous Monday was a Sunday, and that's blue because I think I, I don't know if I mentioned this. I hate Sunday. It should be a Monday. So, But the second Monday was earlier this week, and I'm sitting in my house on Monday, and I'm usually never home. Here's the thing. I work on Monday. I work all the time. I'm working doubles. I'm down at the beach. Again, like I said, you know, some people won't even take Texas beef ribs. I'll do that because I'm the man who stood up. <laughs> all right. Um... But this fucking week, Sunday, I go to work. Here's another reason Sunday sucks. Because I knew I was working a double on Monday. And uh, I was out of town in Florida earlier in the week, so I kind of lost some salary. And I'm like, well, that's all right. I'll catch it up on the back end. And you make some money. Um, Sunday, I get to work, and there's signs all over the shop. And it says, uh, hey, we're closed tomorrow. If you want to eat barbecue, go to Hollywood. And I walk <laughs> over to my manager, and I'm like, dude. I go, is that serious? And he goes, yeah. And I go, why are we closed tomorrow? And he goes, well, we're painting the place. And I'm like, well, could somebody have told me that before I lost nine hours of, of a shift? And, and again, not that the entire place stops down for me to make whatever the fuck I'm going to make and go out and serve d d dinner to strangers, but but I didn't like it. I mean, I was totally un unhappy about it because it wasn't money I was expecting to lose, particularly after having been off for the first week of April. Um, 
So I was home on Monday. I had an appointment Monday. I saw my therapist on Monday morning and uh, and talked to her. That was that was what we sat down, and uh, and we'll talk about this for a second. She looks at me and she's just like, "Well, you know, we ended on a good spot last week to start this week." And I go, "Well, I have some other stuff to talk about." And she's like, "Well, I understand that, but I have a question." And she's like, "You're looking for, uh, I want to know what you're looking for. Like, are you looking for resolution? Are you looking for tools? Are you looking? For, what are you looking to fix?" And uh, and I was like, "Well, I you know I kind of want to fix this." And uh, and dudes, you know, I talked to her for fifty minutes. You have no idea how quickly 50 minutes goes. I mean, it fucking goes, when, especially when you're just unloading a suitcase of crazy. I mean, when you're just sitting there and you're just unloading and you're, and you're pulling stuff out. And at one point, ha, uh, I like stood up. Like I stood up to talk to her and I'm like looking at her and I go, this is weird, right? This is, I should probably sit down. And she's like, well, it's okay. You know, just whatever you got to do. And, uh, and I, that was cool because I felt like she didn't feel like I was a fucking psycho. You know what I mean? Like, but I kind of, but I was like, I just kind of jumped up. Like it was, I was excited about something. And so I jumped up and, uh, but not yelling, you know what I mean? But I was just at the same, why are you, why are you squinting at me? What are you doing? Am I doing this wrong? No. All right. Okay. You made a, made a face, but you didn't really make a face. I mean, yeah, I know you're, I get it. Your sinuses. Just sniffling. Okay. You're scoffing. I call it scoffing. I don't know if you know this. Scoffing is the German word for sniffling. All right, so <laughs> it's spelled with a K. That's actually my that's my favorite German punk band, scoffing. Uh, I saw the one for screwdriver with a K. All right. Um, why now we're Nazi? Now we're into Nazi punk bands. <coughs> Rahoa. All right. Uh, I know. Look, I know a lot about a little. Oh no, actually, I know a little about a lot. I would say, don't you think? I don't think I know a lot about a little. Then I would be like some nerd with glasses who knew everything about uh, like, I, you know, I'd be like Harvey Klinger. I'd be like Harvey Klinger from the Brady Bunch knew everything about bugs and Marsh had a crush on him because um, he knew a lot about bugs, but that's all he knew about. But I know a lot about everything. But I know a little about everything. Well, I know a lot about some things. You know what? I just know a lot of stuff. I know a lot of stuff about some stuff. And I'll tell you what, fuck Harvey Klinger because I know about bees. You know what, Klinger? You want to back up with fucking bee knowledge? Then step right up and you're going to lose Marsha to me. And I'm going to take her away even if the fucking football hit her in the nose. And she went, oh, my nose. I will take Marsha out and we will have two lover's delights. That's exactly what we will have. Oh we will go to the ice cream parlor and I don't give a fuck if the guy who played Shazam is there. I will have two lover's delights. And then Davy Jones will come over and he will sing to us. And then Alice will leave and the woman from family will come in and that's Kay. I don't know if you know, that's Kay. She's not Alice. She's Kay. And then we will all go to try to convince Alice to quit the short order job and come over back home and then we'll order ice cream and she'll give us fruit cocktails. I know a lot about the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Christ. All right. Um, and by the way, as long as we're talking about that, you know what? I hate Gilligan's Island. But I will tell you this. I don't know if you remember. There was one where they had like a talent show on Gilligan's Island, which was fucking stupid. They built a stage and everything. I don't know why. I guess because they were bored. Because what else are they going to do? Fuck Ginger? Yes. Why wouldn't you fuck Ginger instead of building the goddamn stage? Who cares? But they put down this, this Hollywood fucking pageant show. And Ginger, Marianne, and Mrs. Howell formed a band. And I, I, I will give you $5. Do well, I can't do this. Because Goebbels listening. And I'll lose 5 bucks. Um... They were named, what was their name? Because this ties in, this is relevant. I'm telling you this now. What, were, what was the name of the band? The Honeybees. All right, so. See, I tied it in. It's relevant to the show. Because you're just sitting there thinking, why is he talking about the band that Ginger, Marianne, and Mrs. Howell formed on the Gilligan's Island? Because they're called the Honeybees. And Gilligan was the original 40-year-old boy. Uh, <laughs> that's awful. I don't want to be Gilligan. I don't want to be the Gilligan of podcasting. Oh, fuck that. You know what? I was the Gilligan of Never Not Funny. And then Pat took over. Pat became the Gilligan of Never Not Funny when Jimmy just kept hitting us with his hat because he was the skipper. Um, all right. So, what are we talking about? We were talking about something very interesting. Why are you crumbling up the paper and throwing it away? No, you need to know these things. So, Sabrina, I'll say this. Sabrina in Santa Rosa, I sent you a CD. And uh, so, I go there on a Monday to go and stand in line. Oh, oh well, all right. Uh, I was getting it ready. That's, I was going to tell you this. I was in the apartment on Monday and, uh, and I'm getting Sabrina's CD ready. And by getting the CD ready, you know what I have to do? I have to take the shrink wrap off it, sign it, and put it in an envelope. It's not like I was getting it ready. It wasn't taking a long amount of time. Uh, but I had seen my therapist Monday morning and then uh, I, had, I had to go to the gym and then I came home to get the CD ready and I was, I'm just putting stuff together and I was killing time because I also had to get health insurance this week. I had to sign up for health insurance because covered California. This was the last couple of days. And uh, I want to thank all of you out there who were very cool and concerned about me. Dude, you guys are great because like you, you and it's so funny because I, you're, it's like, you're all my parents kind of. Um, and I mean, I guess I need that. And I guess you sense that you're just friends. You're all, we're all internet chums and you take care of me. And Lily takes care of me because Lily was saying, you know, she had to get her insurance. She kept telling me to do it. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. But then online, like our friend Chris Cade and, and uh, other, you know, other people were just like, Hey, make sure you do this. People sent me the link 
They're like, dude, you need to go to Calvert, California and get covered. You need to just do this. And, uh, and so I did. I went to Calvert, California, and I signed up for health insurance this week. And uh, I, I, <laughs> I think I... Um, I think I got the giant Nissan truck of insurance plans. I don't think I needed it, but I just went ahead and grabbed it. Like, there, I, I got the plan that nobody should ever get, quite frankly. And the, here's the thing. I'm never sick. I'm never sick. I'm never at the doctor. But just in case something catastrophic happens, because I am a walking question mark. I mean, you never know if someone's going to stab me. I mean, or if I'm going to kill a bunch of nuns. You never fucking know when I'm going to need to go in and see a doctor, right? So I just feel it's better to have too much posse than none. Um, so I'm like, well, fuck it. I got to go ahead and get the whole thing. I got to go the whole shebang. I mean, why would it? Cause it's like, you know what? Let's put it this way. I look at it like at pizza hut, pizza hut. If they have this special where it's a, any pizza in the world is $10. So why would you get a medium? Go get the fucking large. I'm going to eat one bite of it and then throw the rest of it away. But it was 10 bucks and who the fuck cares? Right? So why would I get a medium? Cause I have a better chance of putting a dent in the medium than I certainly do the large. Did I, th did I talk about trying to give the pizza away at my apartment complex? Did I mention that story on here? Holy shit, dude. I fucking ordered a pizza hut pizza and I've done this like three different times now. I'll be like, oh man, I'm hungry, but it's late, but I don't want anything, but I don't want to drive. But fucking pizza, Hut's a quarter mile from my goddamn house. And I get American Airlines miles if I go ahead and buy at this pizza hut because they're with the AA Advantage program. And uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this to you folks. I'm a gold level flyer on American Airlines. So anytime I can add miles to my coffers, anytime I can get miles and chalk them up because I have a lovely girlfriend I have to fly and see all the time. So, uh, so I need to go have as many miles as I possibly can. So uh, I wind up going to Pizza Hut at night and it's like a $10 any pizza. So then I get the large pizza and then I bring it home and I eat like one or two pieces and then I throw them up and then I want to get rid of the rest of the pizza, right? I'm not going to save it because I'm never going to eat it. Um, and by the way, I've stopped throwing up sometimes i mean i don't throw up all the time i've stopped um now i found it a, a really i actually found it a better thing to do than throwing up folks here's this is a great this is a great tip here's a diet tip chew up your food and spit it out all right so oh my god just don't even swallow it cut out you know why you know what swallowing is middleman fucking hate it hate middlemen swallowing is just a middleman for fuck's sake just chew it up and spit it out you don't have to fucking worry about it then your whole stomach doesn't have to get involved your stomach's just lurking it's down at the bottom they're covered in dust um i don't think i have a dusty stomach but that would be my wrestling name. Holy shit, would that be my wrestling name? <laughs> Bring on Dusty Stomach coming down the aisle at six foot two, 265 pounds from Chicago, Illinois. Dusty Stomach. Who wants some? Nobody. And I'll tell you this, Dusty Stomach is fine with queers. Dusty Stomach is absolutely fine with queers. <laughs> Take that, warrior. And then Dusty Stomach doesn't even use the word queers. He uses the word cock friendly that's what he uses all right so but i mean we're all pretty much cock friendly really depends on the moment depends on the time i mean i'm cock friendly just with my own i haven't been cock friendly with other cocks and that's not to say that the opportunity wouldn't arise and it's not to say that i would run and shy away from it who knows i'd be friendly i mean i don't know if i'd be super friendly we might just, we'd just be acquaintances i i gotta be honest i won't shake hands i wouldn't be shaking many hands all right uh Spencer, the sponsor, has no idea when I'm going to get to his product, but I will, I swear. I have the phone in my hand right now. I, I just, I'm looking at it. Oh, hold on. I got a text. Oh my God. I got a text and during the show. Who's texting me? Dude, you guys know I'm doing a show. Why are you texting me on Wednesday? Wednesdays are off limits. Who's the, oh, hold on. Aw, oh, that's a good text. All right. You know, I'm gonna, I should just read this text. I, should, I, I don't know if that's a breach or a violation of somebody's privacy, but I, what, I, what do I care? <laughs> it was sent to me. I guess it's fair game. Um, it just says, uh, uh, it just says, shh, I know you're busy. Just whispering. I love you. Oh, and, uh, and that's from Lily. That seems strange, right? When she's, she's sitting right here. Uh, no, it's from, it's from, uh, our lovely girlfriend, Jill. Uh, and I say, I say our, because all of us apparently are dating her. I don't know why I use that word. <laughs> all of us uh she's being universally dated by the entire fucking listening ship and by that i mean fan base i don't know where listening ship came from i have no idea i i think i is that a word or a term is that one word is that a compound word listening ship i want to ride captain ride upon my listening ship <laughs> God <damn it. laughs> yeah that can't be stopped the bees are unleashed Dude, I gotta get leashes for those bees. Oh my god, how many tiny leashes for bees? They're so small. Uh, just fucking black and yellow and in your face. All right, so Sabrina and Santa Rosa. Jesus. Actually, this text is from Sabrina and Santa Rosa. <laughs> Shh, I know you're busy. Just whispering, I love you, so you remember. 
I will never forget. I don't it may be. It very well may be. Uh, it, it, it is. It's certainly Jill. Um, but Sabrina and Santa Rosa probably thinking about it because she got a CD, which she loves, although she may not have. And here's why. Because I'm in my house preparing to get sent the CD. And I have, uh, I will tell you this, I boosted a ton of fucking tracking numbers from, from the post office. Um, me and and all the guys from Goodfellas apparently before we did the fucking we did the well we did the Lufthansa heist and then we boosted a bunch of tracking numbers from the fucking post office that didn't sound good at all um so then me and Jimmy Conway went and hit a fucking dry cleaner in the head with a phone to get the money he owes us all right so my favorite dude this week fucking Patrick Patrick the bank robber I almost said his name Patrick the bank robber threw up a thing on Facebook and it's one of my favorite things ever from a Scorsese movie because it has the greatest delivery the next line that I got to type I was so happy I got to type it because it's my favorite delivery in a it, it's one of my I, I would go to say this might be one of my top 10 favorite deliveries in a movie ever in the movie Casino fucking De Niro is running the casino and he's, he's just fucking losing his mind so he's trying to micromanage everything that's going on in the casino because he's under pressure from the gambling commissions and he's trying to get fucking you know Pesci's being a goddamn cowboy and him and his gang are fucking knocking people over and doing all sorts of crazy shit so fucking De Niro and Don Rickles and Kevin Pollock are just walking around the hotel watching De Niro disintegrate and he goes into a kitchen and there's a chef and he looks at the chef and he goes look at this there's no blueberries in this muffin and this muffin is filled with blueberries why and the chef is like, well, it's just, it's just kind of a mix, you know, it, it's, it's we're ranking the muffins. And De Niro is like, that's not the way it goes. That is not acceptable. You need to have as many blueberries in each muffin, an equal amount of blueberries in each muffin. And so Patrick the bank robber wrote, an equal amount of blueberries in each muffin. And I got to write what the chef says because it's my favorite delivery. The chef, it just, it's the most gentle. He's dealing with a crazy person and he just says it. I don't even know who the actor is, but it's such a perfect choice the way he delivers it. And he just goes, do you know how long that's going to take? And it's, it's such a gentle way to say it because he's so shocked and surprised that he's getting yelled at by this guy over the amount of blueberries in a goddamn muffin. And, and De Niro just, and so I got the type and I was so happy I got the type because Patrick just wrote an equal amount of blueberries in every muffin. There should be an equal amount of blueberries in every muffin. And I just got to write, do you know how long that's going to take? Because again, it's not, you know how long that's going to take? Because that, that's, that delivery is out there. You, no, that would not work. The chef is a, an erudite, sophisticated man and he's gentle and he just goes, and he, and he nods and he makes a face and just goes, do you know how long that's going to take? It's so fucking perfect. And I got to type it and I was so excited because it came I, and I typed it, I think within three seconds of Patrick typing it because I just happened to be on Facebook and it popped up on my feed and I boom, I'm like, yes, I get to say this before anybody. And I don't even know if anybody else would have said it. But then immediately Patrick wrote, I don't care how long it's going to take. And then he, in parentheses, he wrote trails off with Kevin Pollack in his wake. I mean, it was awesome. Awesome. Such a great exchange. I loved it. So Sabrina and Santa Rosa, who, uh, who I sent a CD to, I was going to anyway. Um, so we boosted a ton of fucking, I, I, I went ahead, I asked when I went to the post office, because remember when, when I was selling a ton of CDs when they first came out, I didn't want to make them put the tracking numbers on every time I went to the goddamn post office. So they had stickers. And I said, dude, can I take those? They go, well, you're not supposed to have those. But I went to three different post offices and I asked, and they, were, they gave me the, you're not supposed to have those. And I went, oh, I go, it would really be easy. And, uh, and then I would hold up my giant container of like CDs and they go, oh yeah, absolutely. And they would give me the stickers because they didn't want to fucking do it and cause the line to be so long. Um, so I just boosted a ton of stickers. I would just go collect them. So now whenever I get a CD, I have them on my desk and I fucking stick it right on there. But the thing is, then when I get to the post office, I have to see a human because they have to scan that particular tracking number. There are machines that will allow me to go ahead and send it and get a tracking number, but then I have to actually pay for a different tracking number, and I've already stuck the sticker on the envelope, and I can't put a sticker over it because I don't like that. I don't like the way it looks. And again, I'm not sending anybody a fucking steamer trunk from Africa. I'm sending them a CD in a clean envelope. I don't want it to look like fucking Jimmy Stewart's bag and fucking It's a Wonderful Life when he wanted to go and travel all over <laughs> with fucking stickers from Cucamonga. I just want one tracking number. That's it. There should be only one. There can be only one. There shall be only one. There can be only one. And it's better to burn out than fade away. Talk, check it for my friend Kurgan. So, uh, so, I, I, so I have to see a human. Well, I walk, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to do it on Monday. Oh, so again, getting to this. Uh, I'm sitting at my desk. I'm home Monday. I'm not even supposed to be home. I'm not even supposed to be there today. I'm going to be every character from Clerks this week, apparently. <laughs> I was Jane Silent Bob earlier, and now I'm Dante. No time for love, Dr. Jones. And now I'm Randall. <laughs> Randall's the best. 
Dude, when I saw Clerks, Randall was a revelation. I fucking loved him. Everything he did, he was so great. He was so funny. And then I even like Clerks too. The speech he has at the end in the jail, that's, that's like my life. When he's like, hey, I don't have any friends. And I don't want any more fucking friends. I got you. You're my friend. That's it. And it's like, I'm old. I'm not going to make any more friends. My life is basically over. And it's just, I'm listening to him say all that. And I'm just like, yeah, other than being in a jail cell, I'm with Randall. I mean, I completely agree. Uh, no time for love, Dr. Jones. And he walks past that dude. So great. All right. You hate people, but I love gatherings. Ironic, isn't it? God damn it, Randall. And I know Kevin wrote it. I call him Kevin because he's my friend. Apparently, we're buddies. Does he even do podcasts anymore? He should, right? Is he still a podcasting baron? He must be. I know he had the fallout with Lovitz because I had to hear Lovitz grab about it at that fucking meeting I did at the podcast festival. I call it a meeting. Apparently, it was a symposium or some sort. <laughs> it was a meeting. It was a closed-door meeting with an audience and people and microphones. Uh, it was not a meeting at all. I did not get a meeting with Lovitz or his friend and his dog. They brought a dog to it. You brought a dog, Lovitz. What the fuck? Did you see the dog and think that was the ticket? It was not the ticket. Do not bring it. <laughs> Flynn Hagen. Uh, by the way, Stephen Colbert taking over Letterman. How brilliant is that? I'm so excited. I have to mention it. You know why? Because my friend Chuck said, hey, can we get some Stephen Colbert talk this week? Because <laughs> Letterman retired. Chuck's, it's his job to get, uh, send me the headlines. Ripped from today's headlines, Chuck Hudspeth sends me the tweets. Yes, I use your last name, Hudspeth. Chuck Hudspeth sends me the tweets. There might actually be 140 letters in that. All right. Good friend of the show, Chuck Hudspeth, sends me the tweets. That might be, that may actually be a tweet. We should send that tweet out right now during the show. And then he'll be like, why the fuck are you tweeting this about me? But every time I get a tweet from Chuck Hudspeth, you know what I hear? I hear like a typewriter in the background. Like a fucking teletype. Uh, and then I think of Night of the Living Dead because when I was a kid I watched Night of the Living Dead and they had the guy who's like the black and white news reporter and, and it always made me laugh that there were zombies eating people but these guys were in a newsroom and you could still hear the teletype I'm like who's running the teletype some fucking guy in a zombie proof building is just sending out notes and by the way if there's a zombie apocalypse there should not be a teletype you should just be handing bulletins because there is no other news to put on the teletype you can't be given baseball scores when zombies are eating people all over the east coast I'm sorry the teletype should be shut down you should just be handing bulletins that say zombies are still eating people that's it there's no need for a news report tell people what high school gym they have to sleep in that they're going to get eaten inevitably because the zombies are going to overrun it until the rednecks shoot them all and then shoot the black guy at the end who's not really a zombie then my dad's going to make a racist joke about it all right <laughs> i told that story in here right my dad made like like he i watched night of the living dead and i was transfixed by it as a kid because it was just the whole story of zombies eating people it was just such a fucking weird revelation for me and i was horrified by it and i was totally scared and it looked like almost like cinema noir or verite where it was like real it was because it was done in the, in the style of with all the news reports and stuff, it was semi-real. But there was just also the fact that zombies were eating people and charging into the house and they were trying to block people off. And then that guy came up from the basement and he was a dick. And then that girl stabbed a woman with a fucking garden trowel and it was awesome. But at the end of it, I was still freaked out. And I was sitting there, I was almost like vibrating from it because it was just like, oh my God, zombies. And I was scared. And then my dad stood up and he goes, yep, they shot the spade. And he walked out of the house. <laughs> and my mom goes, oh, Len. And he goes, yep, shot the spade. And in my head, I was like still processing the fact that they killed him. He was the hero and he wasn't a zombie and he still got shot in the head. And then I, I actually got the message. It's so funny because it's an anti-racist movie and it's, and, you know, it was filmed at the time and the civil rights and George Romero and he was trying to get a message across. And then there's that thing where he gets shot and then they drag him out with the meat hooks and there's the fucking bullet hole and then they throw him on the fire. And you're like, dude, don't kill that guy. He was the only one who was the fucking smart guy. He was fucking a genius. He was a genius. And I, even as a little kid, I saw it and I was like, no, you can't shoot that guy. But my dad boiled it down to, yeah, they shot the spade. That was what my dad took from Ned the Living Dead. I took fucking zombies and apocalypse. I actually got the civil rights metaphor. I got all of it at nine or whatever the fuck old I was. And my dad went, yep, they shot the spade. He'd cracked a beer, drank it, and then died four years later. Good for him. All right, so four years later, nine. Yeah, right on. Not bad. Dad, death math on the fly. I'm good at this. All right, so uh, was I nine? I might not have been nine. I might have been ten. Might have been three years later. Um, there's a glitch in my dead, dead math feed. <laughs> All right, so Sabrina from Santa Rosa. And don't think I've forgotten about Spencer, the sponsor. Um, by the way, Spencer, the sponsor is, is <laughs> I couldn't even say it. Never mind. Fuck. He's sell. he's, a, you can find him at shootingspades.com. All right. So <laughs> he ties in with my dad. I, uh, no, that's awful. Don't say that about Spencer, the sponsor. Should I even leave that in? I should take that out. Right. That's probably, that might be a bridge too far. Um, well, I said queers earlier, but it wasn't for me. It was the voice from somebody else who wrote me. 
No, it was from the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, he hated queers. I know because Chuck Headspit sent me the news. <laughs> I heard the news today. Oh, boy. Uh, there's 10,000 holes in Blackford, Lancashire, and one hole in the black guy's head at the end of Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> now we know how many holes it takes to fill the Albert Hall and how many holes it takes to kill a black guy at the end of Night of the Living Dead. One, right between the eyes. And they drag him out with meat hooks and throw him on the fire. My dad makes a racist joke about it, and then he has a beer and he dies three years later. Oh dead, dead God. math, in effect. Um, boy, anybody new to this show this week, like from Jordan Jesse Go, they're going to be like, I don't, this is fucking crazy. Because <laughs> with Jordan Jesse Go, I have to sit there politely with my hands folded in my lap and wait for Jesse to stop talking and Jordan to stop talking and try to interact and have fun. Uh, you know, I can't just fucking bulldoze anybody and steamroll them and just talk. This is the shit my mom's talking about when she's like, boy, the kid won't shut up. You're goddamn right I won't. Sabrina and Santa Rosa. <laughs> Talk about you for just a second. And by a second, I mean 40 minutes. Uh, so I'm sitting in my house, and, uh, and I'm trying to get the CD ready because i got to get to the, uh, the, the airport. I was at the airport. Yes, I, I airmailed it to Sabrina. I flew to her house, and I handed it to her. Uh, I had to get to the post office. And uh, as I'm sitting there, uh, there's, a, there's a knock on my front door. And I actually heard my manager of my building say, excuse me, can I help you? And she goes, no, I'm just looking for apartment 8. And, uh, hey, guess, get well, now, I, now you know where I live. All right, uh... <laughs> You already know where I live. I filmed it for fuck's sake. Uh, you know where Lily lives. Oh, no, you don't. I had to take it down in a panic. Dudes, if you would have heard the, the day that that happened, when you heard me, I lost my mind. Oh, my God. I, felt, I thought the podcast was over. I really did. I, I told... Because everything is the end of the world. Well, yes, it is. Because I'm a child. Or it's sex or death. That's There's awesome, no though. In between. There shouldn't be. Should there? Yes. There should be sex and death, and that's it. <laughs> Wait a minute. What about rock and roll? Where the fuck can we get rock and roll in there? I like when you talk, but there is, there's sex or there's death. That's all that there is. It's like, it's either great or it's bad. That's the way it should be. That's fucking life, man. Fuck Neapolitan. I don't need a third flavor. <laughs> uh, so Sabrina from Santa Rosa, I'm sitting at the day and I hear, I'm just looking for apartment eight. And then there's a knock on my door and I look at this woman and, uh, and I say, can I help you? And she says, shh, I know you're busy. Just whispering. I love you. She probably did not say that, but uh, she's like, hey, are you Mike? And I go, yeah. And I walk over to the fucking door like an idiot. And uh, and I go, can I help you? And she goes, yeah. And uh, she goes, you've been served. <laughs> and she hands me a packet of papers. And uh, and I'll be honest with you, I won't lie. She was a Latina girl and she was young. So when she said, you just, you've been served, I expected her to dance. <laughs> I'm never home on Monday. I thought maybe there was a dance battle about to happen. And I got ready. I will not lie to you. I got ready. I'm happy I was up early and showered and been to my therapist and been to the gym because I was in fucking shape. I am vascular. I am yoked. And I will fucking tear you down. You want to fucking serve me? You just got served. I will fucking dance you into the goddamn patio. You will not move. You will not goddamn move. You'll just lay there like a Latina welcome mat as I fucking strut around you with my fucking victory intact. But turns out what she meant was like grown-up stuff. <laughs> grown up stuff. And I gotta go to court. <laughs> I don't wanna go to court. Uh, Cause I thought it was a dance contest. I was totally stoked. I'm like, you know what? That's awesome. Thank God you're here. Cause usually I'm working on Monday. I'm gonna get served. You're gonna get served. <laughs> this whole apartment complex is gonna get served. And I fucking just put, I threw on some Zubas and I did a hammer dance. I was ready. I was excited. I did a running man, I did a cabbage patch. I did a cabbage patch. I did a running man. I did a cabbage man and a running patch. I did a patch man and a running cabbage. I did them all. You got to see the running cabbage. That's not bad. It's like the running man with the cabbage patch at the same time. Holy shit. You don't want to deal with my running cabbage. You can't handle my running cabbage. You want to serve me? I'm going to serve you a big plate of fucking running cabbage. There's nothing you can do about it. You get a fork and choke it down, motherfucker, and sit down and watch it happen. A big plate of running cabbage. And you know where you eat that? You eat it in the patch, man. <laughs> eat my running cabbage in the patch, man. But no, it turns out she's an adult. And, uh, and I got to go to court. And look, folks, look, we all know I'm one step ahead of the law at all times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are. It's, 
Crazy Michael and Dirty Lily are always one step ahead of the law. Oh, Dirty Lily. Remember her from earlier in year six? We all love Dirty Lily. So, but now the law has caught up to me. They found me. They, I, I, I was just, uh, and I, I don't like it. I don't like, I don't care for that, quite frankly. <laughs> Unless they think by serving me in court, it, they mean dance contest. Maybe there's a dance contest in the court. Maybe it'll happen there. Uh, so yeah, I get, I'm getting sued by, well, and look, I'm, like, I'm getting sued by everybody, but this is the first one who actually found me, I suppose. I don't know. Because uh, my butler quit and my life fell apart. That happened earlier in year six. Remember that? Actually, that happened at the end of year five. Year six has been fucking dealing with it. Um, and I've been hiding. I'm well, not really in hiding. I just, I, you know, I bury myself in my fucking work. I'm out there giving sauce to people and getting sticky $5 bills at one, one enabling it at a time. I'm building my empire. Um, but now they're coming for it. That's the thing. They're coming for my empire. And I say, you know what? Fuck that. Say goodnight to the bad guy. Uh, so, uh, so I got sued. And so it made me, it, uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make progress and, and all this stuff where, you, you, you know, you can fit yourself things are okay. But, I've, you know, I'm still hiding under the coats from a lot of stuff, you know, and, and hoping that it doesn't catch up to me. But then when it catches up to you, you're just like, you're just crestfallen. You're like, oh, God, you know, I don't. So then now, because I didn't, I mean, I'm probably going to have to declare bankruptcy. Like, and I, I, I didn't want to. I just thought they would just keep sending me letters and calling me and I would ignore them forever. And then eventually they would just get tired of it and everything would be fine again. And then... <laughs> And I could peek my head out from under the coats and the sun would be shining and the world would be normal and I would be fine. I could go on with my life and not have to worry about fucking process servers and guys coming after me and junk mail and phone calls. And, uh, and it's ruined. It all fell apart. You know, because you know what fucking happened? I hid under the coats and I got up and I peeked out from under the coats and a fucking hillbilly shot me in the center of my head and they dragged me off with meat hooks and threw me in the goddamn fire. <laughs> Fuck! I survived. I survived all of it. I survived junk mail and phone calls and process servers and everybody came looking for me and a butler fucking quit and I was all alone and fucking sure enough, I climb out from under the coats, I look out the window and I take one right in the fucking center of the goddamn forehead, right between the eyes, and they drag me out with grappling hooks and they throw me on the goddamn fire. And somewhere in the afterlife, my dad laughs and has a goddamn beer. So Sabrina in Santa Rosa, <laughs> as I'm preparing her CD, uh, I sure enough, I wind up getting thrust into the adult world, <laughs> which has a much different connotation depending on where you're saying it. <laughs> I got thrust into the adult world. All right. Because sometimes I'm happy to hear that sentence, but uh, this time I'm not. Um, but then I had to go to the post office and send her the, the, the CD because I, 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 that's how I consoled myself. I go, you know what? I am so miserable right now from getting served uh, that I need to go and give Sabrina some happiness. I need to go ahead and realize that there's one person out there who actually cares and wants to hear from me. So I went to the post office and uh, I had already put the tracking number on and I get there and there's like fucking 80 people in line at the goddamn post office. What the fuck are you people doing in line on April 14th? Oh, filing your taxes or sending those off? Good. <laughs> Probably should have thought of that myself. Uh, but I walk into the goddamn post office and it, it is a line, it is a serpentine line. It is, a, dude, it is, it is such a serpentine line that Axl Rose is doing the dance of this line. That's how serpentine this line is. My, my serpentine. I'm going to hear you scream, folks. All right, so the line is like out the fucking door. It's fucking snaking around. And I'm not standing in that fucking line. Look, I love you, Sabrina from Santa Rosa. And I love the fact that you sent me this text and I will always remember it. Thank you. Uh, no, of course, that's our friend Jill. But, uh. <laughs> But I so, I, I, but I want, I just, I can't stand on a line for you. I mean, I would, Sabrina, I would absolutely stand on a line for you. But this line was, this is an oppressive line. This is a brutal line. This is, I am not a fan. So I said, I will have to use the machine. I have to go robot. But I've already got the tracking number stuck on the envelope. And whenever I do the machine, whenever I deal with the fucking robot, uh, I, 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 I mean, I know how to do it. I do it properly. I do it right. And it's because, again, you can't fuck up mailing something. It asks you, is this a bag of poison? No. Here's a stamp. I mean, literally, that's how fucking it easy it is. Uh, it is are you mailing a gun? No. Is this a, is this a loaded weapon? No. Is this a scimitar of some sort? It is not. Do you have a sigh? Have you included a box of size? Uh, well, I define size. We mean the three-pronged uh, pitchfork weapon from the Asian martial art, not the box of... <sighs> I go, oh, good, because I am shipping a box of, <sighs> pretty much my entire CD is just a box of, <sighs> and they go, no, we meant the pointy size. And I go, well, there, is a, there are some pointed size in my CD. And they said, stop with this discussion. We're just a robot. 
And I said, look, uh, robot, what would you like me to do? And they said, press these buttons and just say yes. And I said, okay. Is this a bag of boiling water? No, it is not, fucking robot. Uh, so, but I didn't, I didn't get a tracking number. I wanted to because it never tells me how to get the tracking number. Uh, and so here's what I did, Sabrina from Santa Rosa. I just, I fudged it. Uh, I bought the postage, first class postage, with Spider-Man on it, which made no fucking sense to me. Did you know Spider-Man is now like an iconic character who belongs on stamps? You know who's furious? Ben fucking Franklin. So mad. I don't even think he's on a stamp. Ben Franklin's not on a goddamn stamp. He's on the $100 bill. Now look, if we put, go ahead and put fucking Spider-Man on the $100 bill, then we got a problem, probably. Although, I gotta be honest with you, I'm all for putting Spider-Man on the $100 bill. Why not? Because you know what that does? Deters crime. Because if some dude goes in and he gets a fucking pack of 100 and he looks and there's Spider-Man on it, it's a deadly reminder that that's who's on his trail and he's going to get fucking busted. Absolutely. He is always in danger of getting webbed up. You can't be stealing shit with Spider-Man's face on it. Because it's a deadly reminder that you will always be having Spider-Man on your tail. He will never rest. Unless he's off in a warehouse somewhere trying to make quick cash by fighting Dusty Stomach. He will never rest. (laughs) Goddamn origin story. I slip it right in there on you. Because that's when Spider-Man rested, of course, and then that gun fucking villain ran out and he shot Uncle Ben. If you're a criminal, never shoot anybody. Because inevitably, their son will grow up and be given the scourge of the underworld. That's the, that's the lesson I've learned from comic books. If you are a criminal and you shoot somebody, inevitably, shoot their kid too. Because otherwise, <laughs> that kid is going to grow up and just be the scourge of the underworld. So Sabrina from Santa Rosa... I buy your postage, it comes out, and there's Spider-Man on it, which I thought was odd, because it's literally, this is where we've come. When I was a kid, you put flags on stamps. And I don't mean to sound like some old dude who walked in the snow to school for fucking five miles, but I I have to admit, I was taken aback when Spider-Man was spit out of the machine, because a Spider-Man stamp seems like something you should want to purchase, not like something that was foisted upon you. Stamps should have some sort of civic pride. They shouldn't just have fucking Peter Parker's alter ego on there. They shouldn't have a fucking (laughs) hero. And if you're going to do that, throw them all on there for fuck's sake. I want to buy a fucking stamp with a juggernaut on it. (laughs) I'm the juggernaut, bitch. Uh, So, Spider-Man stamp comes out. And then, this is even worse. It's got the stamp, you know, however much it is for first class mail. And then attached to it is another picture of Spider-Man. And it says, see Amazing Spider-Man 2 in a theater near you on May 2nd. And then, but, but in bold letters, it also says, this portion is not a stamp. Oh, it's an advertisement. It is. And look, I'm all for the post wow. office trying to stay in business. Because I got, look, I have postal friends out there. I've got a Manny. I've got a Manny. I've got an Aaron. I've got a Sandra D. Sanchez. Although she delivers mail in Canada, and that's not the same. She rides a moose fucking door to door, and they're never in any danger. Because they don't have phones in Canada, so they have to deal with mail. Everybody still writes in longhand up there. They don't even have email up there in fucking Canada. I talked to Sandra D. Sanchez. You know how? She sends me notes. Like, she mails me things. And, it's, and look, and it makes sense because she's a male woman. So she's got, and she's Sandra D. Sanchez, male woman. <laughs> that is, honestly, that's the worst show on Discovery Channel. Um, actually, it's on the Lifetime Channel. Uh, so, so Sandra D. Sanchez rides her moose from door to door. And because uh, and, and that's how they work in Canada. They write letters to one another. Here in America, fuck that. We don't have the time for it. You know what we do here? We podcast. That's how we get our message across. Um, just me, you, and Dusty Stomach in a room with a fucking microphone. All right, so, so I, I obviously I can't use the, and that was the thing I didn't understand about the advertisement. It was kind of like a sticker, I think, but it was attached to the postage. Am I supposed to save that for something? Am I supposed to be happy that they gave me a bonus picture of Spider Man? Uh, I don't know. It made no sense. And again, like I said, I want the post office to stay in business because, you know, because <laughs> look at the fun we've had on this show with them. For fuck's sake, if they didn't exist, I wouldn't be able to tell this goddamn story. And how would I get Sabrina and Santa Rosa her fucking CD? Because Sandra D. Sanchez isn't going to ride her moose to fucking Southern California and grab it and bring it up there. Absolutely not. We need a post office down here. So, uh, so I fudged it. I paid for postage, but I did not pay for a tracking number. But I left the tracking number on the envelope. And I memorized it. So if it gets lost, I know what it is and I can go to the post office and tell them what it is. Uh, they're probably going to say, well, we didn't scan it. We don't have a scan of it. You didn't pay for it. I'm like, I don't care. Find it. <laughs> I have spoken. Uh, but I guess my point is, I figured if it was in California, it wouldn't, it, it's not going to get lost. It's never going to get lost. And also, I'm not sending it to Jill, so it's not going to get lost. It's never <laughs> going to get lost. 
because uh, let me tell you about that, folks. Let's talk about that for just a second. Uh, I think I told you all about the flower debacle when I was trying to get Jill uh, some flowers. Well, uh, there's a long-standing history of things that have happened with Jill and I, me sending her products. Um, products. I send her products. I'm Amway. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm a shill, and I send Amway to people. Um, when my CD came out, you know, there, there, were, there are people who donate to the show, and they're very cool, and, and uh, there's certain levels, and there's tiers of people who donate to the show. There's, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, if you go to the Joe Business page at MikeSchmidtComedy.com, you can actually donate to the show. There's an upper, uh, there's a little schmidt in the upper left-hand corner. And you can donate $25 a month, $10 a month, $5 to a, well, um, all $25 a month donors, uh, I sent them the CD as a gift. Like they didn't know they were getting it and I just sent it. But, uh, and I think I may have covered this on the show. Um, I didn't autograph them. Uh, I just sent them wrapped in the plastic wrap because I thought it was stupid to unwrap it and sign it because I didn't feel that they would see any value in getting my autograph, I think that they would want a closed CD and they could decide what to do with it. Um, so, so people were kind of pissed that I didn't sign it and some people were nice about it and, and, and there were some people who actually bought a second CD so I would sign it and send it and kept the other one wrapped. I mean, just people were really cool. Um, but I sent Jill a CD and, uh, and, it, and I didn't autograph it and it never arrived. Anyway, because... Uh, because then I, you know, I asked people, because once I didn't hear from people, if it, for it, it, did it arrive, did it not arrive? She's like, I never got anything. And so I'm like, God damn it. Because I was trying to do a nice thing to send people who donated to the show CDs and go, here you go. And then it never arrived. And it was my fault because back then I wasn't buying tracking numbers because I figured, oh, well, who cares? Um, and and I, didn't, I didn't fucking track it. And it never arrived at her house. It never arrived. So I talked to her through Facebook and I'm like, it never showed up. She's like, no. And then I said, all right. I said, well, you know, I sent it to you because you're a donor and I appreciate that. And I go, but, you know, it was, and I didn't autograph it. And she goes, well, why didn't you autograph it? I go, well, why should I autograph it? It makes no sense. Like, I, you know, people want it personalized. She goes, I want it personalized. I mean, but you know me, like, as a person. Like, I've seen you in person. Why would you want to personalize? And she's like, because I want it. I really want it. And I went, all right, fine. So then I sent her an autographed CD. And then uh, I think, I'm not kidding, six weeks later, the other one showed up at her house, mangled and all beaten up, but it was fucking there. And then she she gives it back to me. She's like, here, you can go ahead and sell this one. I'm like, oh, I don't want that. No, I'm not like a complete cheap asshole. That's terrible. Even though she was doing a good thing and give me one that was unopened that I could sell later. Whatever the fuck. Why am I telling this story? Nobody cares. Uh, but the bottom line is it's just to indicate that I cannot say anything to Jill without there being a snafu. Case in point. Uh, all right. I'm just, uh, fuck, you know me. I like candy bars or I have and I try not to eat them in the past. I'm trying to stop. And I, I've given my, I can only eat them when with Jill. It's a long story. Who fucking cares? I have candy rules now. So, uh, so Jill likes a particular candy bar and I can never find it anywhere. She likes to take five bars. That's like her deal. She's like, oh man, take five bars are the best. And by the way, she's, she's like tiny. I mean, she wouldn't know. I like, I, I think she's eaten one candy bar in her life, but it was a take five and she liked it. So she's like, oh man, that's totally my favorite candy bar. So, uh, <clears throat> the, the, or th this week I thought it would be a uh, fun and so I went to Amazon.com and I sent her a box of Take 5 bars. Just as a, just like so she would get them and open them and be like, oh, it's the equivalent of sending a text in the middle of the show. It was, it's that sort of thing. I'm thinking of you. Here's a box of diabetes. So, uh, so I send it. And, I, and look, I, I don't know if you guys know this. I think I've mentioned I'm an American Airlines Gold Level Flyer. Well, on Amazon, I'm also a Prime member. So I get certain shipping privileges. Uh, I don't know how you handle your business. But I go through my Amazon portal at MikeSchmidtComedy.com on the Joe Business page, and I order a box of Take 5 bars. Now, I will tell you this. There's like six different dudes selling Take 5 bars. There's six different ads for them, and I'm trying to find the best one. Uh, and it turns out, though, they're all sent by the same guy. It's just he's spammed them. He's got like all these different versions of the fucking Take 5 sale. I, I don't fucking get it. Whatever. But I pick one, and I send it, and I get guaranteed two-day shipping. I wanted next day shipping, but apparently the candy bars don't work that way. I have no idea. So uh, I send her the box of candy bars and I wait <coughs> and I wait all day Friday to hear from her and to hear about her getting them. And then uh, I'm texting her and it's like midnight where she is. And I go, did you check your mail today? <laughs> and cause she never said anything or all or, or thanks or any. And uh, she just goes, what my physical mail or my email? I go, no, your actual mail. And she's like, no, I didn't hold on. And I, well, don't go outside. It's midnight. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen out there. It's Wisconsin. It's a jungle. Coyotes roaming the earth. 
Uh, plus, you peek your head out to get mail, Hillbilly is going to shoot you in the head, get grappling hooks, and drive you and put you on the goddamn fire. And then my dad's going to go, yep, they shot the Jill, and he's going to have a beer and laugh at you in the afterlife. So, uh, so she goes to get the mail, and then she comes back, and she goes, uh, nothing. I'm like, oh, God damn it. She goes, what? And I go, nothing, forget it. I don't, because I have to, every time I send her something, I have to tell her that it's coming. I want to surprise her with stuff. That's the whole point of the flowers, and it turned into a mess. I just want her to get something and smile. That's all I fucking want. I like surprises. I'm an idiot. So uh, I go, well, you know, because where she lives, she has a neighbor. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's in her door. And she's like, well, hold on. I'll check. And I go, well, don't go outside. You don't have to do that. It's freezing there in Wisconsin. And again, you get shot. Uh, you're not wearing orange. Um, so she walks. I, she goes to get it, I guess. And then she comes in and she's like, uh, I got it. It was in her door. And I'm like, great. And there's a couple of minutes go by and she goes, it's nice, but what does it mean? And I went, oh, my God. She goes, why would you send me a box of Kit Kats? Oh, no. And I just, I, I typed it. I went, oh, my God. And I called her immediately. And she picks up the phone, and she's laughing already. She's laughing. And I go, what's funny? And she goes, because I know what you meant to send. I know, I guarantee you, you were sending Take 5 bars. And I go, yeah, why? And she goes, because I look at the bottom of the Kit Kat bars and it has a barcode for Take 5 taped over the Kit Kat bars. So obviously they scanned it and they thought it was, they just didn't care. The fucking robots at Amazon didn't fucking care. And I, I, I go, is this ever going to end? Will I ever be able to get you something that I meant to get? And she's laughing. She, dude, she can't stop laughing at me. And I lose my mind. And I'm just like... Well, she's just laughing. No, she's laughing. She's enjoying it. She thinks it's funny. And she goes, honey, I know what you meant. I totally know what you meant. I go, I know you know what I meant, but now there's no fucking surprise. And now you get a box of goddamn Kit Kats. And I go, and you don't like Kit Kats? She goes, no, I don't. I go, oh my God. <laughs> nobody likes Kit Kats. That's why the guy's fucking sending them out free. Because nobody likes them. Nobody wants to buy them. So it's like, ah, oh, I got a surplus of fucking Kit Kats. Let's just blow those out the fucking door. Nobody wants these fucking things. And she's like, yeah. I, she goes, I'll be honest with you. She goes, the second I opened it, I knew, I knew, I knew. She goes, I didn't even see the barcode and I knew what you meant. She goes, that's why I wrote, what does it mean? She goes, I go, I open it, I laugh and I go, he's going to be so mad. And I go, I am mad. I'm mad. Fuck, I'm mad at candy bars. I'm mad at the guy in Vegas. I'm mad at Amazon. I'm mad at fucking everybody at this goddamn point. I'm mad at surprises. I'm mad at all of it. I'm mad at Spencer, the sponsor, who wants me to talk about his goddamn product. I should tell you that he's shipping candy bars all over the United States. The, the wrong candy bar. You can get them at wrongcandybar.com. That's where Spencer the Sponsor is. Uh, so fuck me. I can't send anything. I tried to send it. She sure enough, she gets the... And she's laughing, dude. She is... She, because it's a, now it's a thing. And I go, look. And again, I'm weird in the fucking head. I go, I didn't fuck this up. I promise you I didn't fuck this up. She goes, I know you didn't. It's fine. It's a mistake. It happens. I go, it happens too often. And it happens to me all the goddamn time. And it looks like my fat thumbs didn't know how to push the take five button. That's bullshit. I got a receipt that says take five. This is fucking crazy. And she's like, well, you don't even worry about it, honey. It's no problem. And I go, I go, just, I just throw them away. Do something with them. And, I, and she's like, no, I, it's okay. And I go, no, don't eat them. You hate them. Pass them out to fucking. And she goes, you know what? She goes, well, all right, I'll, I'll tell you this. And I go, oh my God, what? Is there a bomb in there? What the fuck? She goes, they're fun size Kit Kats. I'm like, of course they are. Of course they're not even full size candy bars. She goes, they're tiny. Like I've never seen Kit Kats this small. And I'm like, oh, dude. <laughs> This guy just sent a box of junk. That's all he did. He literally, he looked at his card table and he swept his arm and anything that was on it went into the box and he sealed it and fucking sent it. God damn it. Fuck you, Nillum. Seller on Amazon who I gave bad feedback to because you sent the wrong candy bar. Take five. Do me a favor. Take five next time and check your packaging, motherfucker, because you sent the wrong fucking candy bar. And again, I'm here, she's there. I need eyes on the ground. I've already got a flower guy on the ground, either a flower lady. That's good, I've got her. Now I need a candy person on the ground. And you know what's funny? I actually have a candy person on the ground in Wisconsin. His name is Austin. But I didn't contact Austin because he doesn't have Take 5 bars. He works in an artisan chocolate shop. But I wasn't sending artisan chocolate. I was sending Take 5 bars. <laughs> so I so I just went, I go, I don't know, throw them out. So then I go, you know what? Do, and I go, don't throw them out. I go, Amazon might need them back. I go, and she goes, what are you going to do? I go, I'm going to talk to Amazon customer service. She goes, don't do that. It's a fucking box of candy bars. I go, bullshit, I have to. So sure enough, I went to Amazon customer service and I went for a chat. It's fucking three in the morning. And uh, and I, I'm just like, uh, you know, hi, weird Amazon robot. And then he goes, hi, I am Ragav. How can I help you? R-A-G-A-V, Ragav. So uh, it was nice that even with the Ukraine under siege from Russia, 
Ragav could take time out from holding the border to go ahead and fill my fucking candy bar order. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I ordered this candy bar and I got this candy bar. It's a mistake. And he goes, is this in regards to the Hershey's Take 524 pack? And I said, yes. And he goes, what seems to be the problem with the Hershey's Take 524 pack? And I said, well, unfortunately, I ordered that and I, and I got one of the Kit Kats instead. And it's just a big mistake. And he goes, I think there's something we can do for you. I think I can go ahead and figure out a way to refund you for the Hershey's Take 524 pack. Like he kept calling it that. It was so great. He never called it. I, I, and then I got to talking like a robot. I'm like, thank you for all of your help with the Hershey Take 524 pack. And, uh, and dude, it was refunded in like five seconds. Like they, they didn't even fuck around at Amazon. And they, and they said, keep the other fucking bar and we will take, we're done. We'll refund it right now. And I went to my fucking bank. It was done, literally in like a minute. I got a refund. And uh, and then of course I get nine surveys from Amazon. How was Ragav? And then I'm I'm like Ragav was great. And but his they gave his real name, and it was just like, uh, dude, that guy's a fucking eye chart. Like there's like there was like forty Z's and a V. And I, I mean it's like Ragav is a Vazarian. And I'm like, dude, did you bomb the Boston Marathon and then hide out there? What the fuck? <laughs> he was the third dude. Um, <laughs> Literally, that's what I thought. I was like, I didn't know Amazon customer service was in a boat in somebody's driveway in Massachusetts. No wonder Ragav was so quick to help me. He was bleeding out. He had to complete that final offer to get his pension fucking certified so he could have some insurance for his lonely mom. Yes, I know it was not Ragav Sarniev. Sarniev, Dmitry Sarniev? Is it Sarne Sarniev? I don't know. They had an incident yesterday at the, at the Marathon. I have to say this because nobody, people who don't follow me on Twitter and Facebook, I have to tell you this. Dude, I had to, I laughed my ass off because, again, I saw that there was like, they talked about unattended backpacks at the, at the marathon and they were going to arrest a dude. And I said, dude, if I lived in Boston, I would absolutely name my band Johnny Finish Line and the Unattended Backpacks. Oh, my God. <laughs> Johnny Finish Line and the Unattended Backpacks. Oh, I loved it. It's funny. It's been a year. I mean, look, let's put it this way. There was nothing funny about it last year. Well, there's nothing funny about it now, let's be honest. <laughs> All right. There's nothing funny about it. But, of course, time plus tragedy equals comedy, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, I think I may have I chilly dipped that. I got my dead dad math down, but I don't know if I might have my tragic comedy math down. But I'm right, right? Tragic, tragedy plus comedy equals... No, tragedy plus time equals comedy. Okay, but I just said time plus tragedy equals comedy. Time should not be first. Time plus tragedy, tragedy you got to flip it, though. You got to say tragedy to first. To tragedy gets top billing. Work. Tragedy gets top billing over time. I think it does. Tragedy plus time equals comedy. I mean, if you go alphabetically, I'm wrong. I'm wrong pretty much on every level, but I think it's tragedy plus time equals comedy. Or no, it shouldn't it be comedy equals tragedy plus time? I think it's comedy. You are so exasperated with me right now, and I don't get it. I don't understand. Why aren't you just going ahead? Do me a favor. Throw a saddle on a B and ride along. Just have some fun. It's the last show of the year. It's the last day of school. That's, That's what this should be. Oh, you're all you're all twitchy because you're scoffing with screwdriver. Tragedy plus comedy equals sex and horror. Yeah, see, look at you going to the internet. Do me a favor, go to Amazon and open up a chat. Ask Ragav, he'll know. Ken Oswald has a new show called Tragedy plus Comedy equals time. Oh, and that became he that's the new. Screwed it up. All right, and that's the new Google feed. Probably that that's what it def defaults to. Well, good for Patton. I just watched his last special. I actually I hadn't seen it, and Max threw it on when I was at his house. God damn, Patton's a fucking genius. So hysterical. You know who's special I just taped? And I can't wait to watch it. I haven't watched it yet. David Tell. God damn it. He's got a new special that just aired this week on Comedy Central. David Tell, he'll come on my fucking comedy, the radio in the, in the car. And they, you know, they, again, I'm sure Alonzo Bowden is a nice man, but holy fucking God. Alonzo Bowden is the Tesla of comedy on fucking XM. They will not stop playing him. It's like, because they, I, you know, I listen to, here's how I do it. Here's how I handle my radio, folks. Channel 33 is First Wave, and that's like your 80s Depeche Mode and all those bands. And if there's something on there I don't like, I use the knob. I don't have it as a preset. I use the knob, and I turn to 34, because that's like 90s type of rock. And I'll tell you what, that station, I, look, I don't know who Gavin Rossdale is blowing at XM. But Jesus Christ, Bush, enough Bush. I know everything's Zen, but I don't need to hear everything Bush on my goddamn station. Take it off, take it down. Because right now, I got glycerine pouring out of my ears. Uh, but then I'll pop over to 38, which is, of course, Ozzy's Boneyard. And then I'll turn the knob. I don't have it as a preset. I'll turn the knob to 39, which is Hair Nation. And they go bananas with the Tesla. Oh, my God. They go bananas. I want, you know what? I want that to be the name of something. They go bananas with the Tesla. You know, that's actually the main complaint at the Marconi convention every year when they have to wade through the protesters. <laughs> that's, the, that's the topic of discussion always in the lobby when they get through the protesters. They go bananas with the Tesla out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So 
Uh, but David Tell's a genius, man. It's like, he'll come on my exam and I'm like, play him forever. Just, just keep playing him because he's so fucking funny. You know who else? I told you one of my, one of the great compliments Max ever paid me was like, we were watching Nick DiPaolo and he goes, this guy's you. He goes, you, this, this guy always reminds me of you because he's, and cause I'm not hearing Nick DiPaolo stand up and I'm like, God damn it. He's just, oh my God, is he funny? Dude, Nick DiPaolo's great. All those fucking, and it, those wheel, those New York guys are kind of wheelhouse for me. Like Jim Norton and stuff, I'll hear him, and I'm like, and I was trying to tell Lily one time about a Jim Norton bitch. She goes, I don't, I don't care. Don't want. And she didn't like it. Didn't think it was funny, and, I, and she thought it was misogynist and sexist. And I'm like, yeah, you know, kind of probably is. I mean, really, when you think about it. But Jesus, did it make me laugh when I heard it on the fucking radio? I was dying. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know why that whole fucking like I loved a tough crowd with Colin Quinn. I loved that show, man. Just fucking all these guys just going at each other's throats. You know who is a genius too? Greg Giraldo. God damn, why is Greg Giraldo dead? We talked about it when when he died on here. He is just a machine, a fucking machine. Uh, I I will say this too. Uh, let's talk about this. Let's say this about that. As I will quote my friend, I think Jim Pardo. Uh, I'll call him Jim. Um. I was in the car and there was a show called Unmasked with Mark Marin on. And I love Mark. Mark's a good guy. Uh, but he was talking about, they were talking about his show and they were talking about the challenges of the open of the show, of the podcast. Um, and, you know, they talk, because they talk about the interview or whatever. And he talks about how he, get, he was getting psyched up for it. And he was talking about how learning you can actually talk in front of a microphone by yourself is so liberating. And how he would freak out when he was going to do the first radio show, you know, on Air America and all that. And he's like, oh, my God, who's going to call in? What do we have to talk about? What are we going to do? What are we going to say? And uh, and then he's like, but then, you know, you realize that you can do it and it becomes a thing where you don't have to have questions for anybody. And, and he's talking about how he opens the show with the stream of consciousness bit before the interview. And they were just like they were talking about I think the interviewer said it was brave or something like that. He was talking about how it was hard to do. And, I, and I'm just I was driving. <laughs> <laughs> and all I could hear was my mom's voice going, you talk for three hours, the kid won't shut up. But he's brave because he opens the show with like a 10 minute stream of consciousness riff or whatever the fuck. And I'm like, I got news for you, folks. Uh, and then I realize I'm in my car by myself and there are no folks. So I don't know why I'm saying that out loud, but yet I continue to do it because that's what I do. I have a dialogue with myself in the car at all times. Do you know how long that's going to take? So Spencer, the sponsor, wants to be mentioned, and I don't blame him, and he has been persistent about it, and I turned him over to Lily at one point, and unfortunately Lily was not able to hook up with him, and then I told him, you know what, Spencer, this probably isn't going to work. I think that was actually the only thing I said to him. I never I never told him when I was involved or ready to do it. I, I think I wrote him once and said, yeah, you know what, I'll, I'll ask Lily if she can handle this, and unfortunately Lily was very busy doing other things, and then uh, I said to myself, you know, you're a grown-up ostensibly you're a you're a grown man an old person you should probably step to the forefront and take control of something that has something to do with your fucking show uh and then i think i wrote spencer an email and then uh i i hid under the coats and everything went away and then spencer wrote me and went hey i'm not uh, i'm not gonna sponsor not interested anymore and i said cool uh which you know that just means that i don't have to have an uncomfortable conversation with you anymore uh that's fine uh because i am scared of money folks i fear it i don't like the germs that are involved in having cash uh and I look, I understand that Spencer and I would be doing all of our business in Bitcoin, but I, dude, I don't even know what the germs are on Bitcoins. That's fucking, that's completely new. Cause they always said, you know, don't put coins in your mouth. And I've ignored that advice for years. I got a mouthful of nickels at all times. However, Bitcoins, you're not supposed to put in your mouth for an entirely different reason. They don't exist. All right. So, uh, so I'm actually doing this show now with a mouthful of nickels. Did you know that? Uh, that's, that's how gigantic my mouth's as big as my head. Because I can put a fucking, I, you know, I put a, you know, they say put a pinch between your cheek and gum. I do that with nickels. <laughs> I just take a roll of nickels and jam it right in my lip. It's awesome. Uh, and then I got a big like Popeye jaw. Uh, oh man, I love French Connection. Remember Popeye jaw and French Connection? Um, oh, Jesus. See, that's what happens, folks, when you don't, when you don't just make yourself fucking talk. Because I'm having fun. Last day of school, as I mentioned. And I, Lily, she can't wait to get out. She's just, she's like, literally, she is sitting here. She's not even listening to me anymore. She has earbuds in and she's listening to Schools Out by Ellis Cooper. <laughs> waiting. Waiting to run and throw her papers in the air and just fucking go, oh man, no more teacher's dirty looks. Thank God. Even though I'm not the teacher. And I'm not giving dirty looks. I'm just talking in goddamn circles. Um, Spencer, the sponsor, after I basically hid under the coats and ignored him, uh... Then two weeks later, writes me again, and he's like, dude, I'm really, I want to do this. Like, he, he could not have been more persistent if he came to my house and served me a summons filled with cash. Like, honestly, he is so nice to want to do this. And, uh, and I just, you know, I told him, he's like, all right, we can do this. You know, mention it on the page. Do the, and I was just like, I don't, I go, look, man, I got to be honest with you. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do for you. I don't know if it's going to be anything you would want to do. I, I spent 
an entire email trying to talk him out of sponsoring the show. And, uh, and Spencer was refusing to hear it. And instead he said, I am in, I am on board. Let's do this. Here's money for you. Shut the fuck up. He should have just punched me in the mouth with a fucking, well, you know what? Quite frankly, with a roll of nickels, he should have done that. Cause that's about what I deserved at that point. Um, so Spencer <laughs> is the sponsor of this week's show. Uh, and I will tell you, here's what Spencer does. Uh, I, you know, I should just read his email. Should I read his email? I should. His note. Uh, let me give you a little backstory on Spencer, the sponsor. I don't know if I can give Spencer's last name, although I guess I can if you're going to go to his website. First thing I'll do is I'll give you the website because then maybe you can go there and follow along with the things that I'm saying here. If you go to bbcoachspence.com, that's bbcoachspence.com, and that's all I'm going to say. I, you know, I don't have to tell you what it is because obviously just from that, uh, that web address, you understand that he's going to coach you how to shoot a BB gun. That's what he does. Or perhaps he's a basketball coach. Is that what you're thinking? He's basketballcoachspence.com. I just like coach Spence. I like the fact that Spencer, the sponsor goes by Spence. I'm going to, you know what? We got to call him Spence, the sponsor. That's what we got to go with. Fuck Spencer, the sponsor. This show, you know what? No more ours. That's how I feel about this show. He Spence, the sponsor. Coach Spence. Uh, so you're thinking basketball coach, you're thinking baseball coach, perhaps. You're thinking baked beans coach. Oh my God, what if he's coaching how to make big beans? He's got a fucking kiln in his house. He's going to fire it up. He's going to throw some brown sugar in there, some beans, some Boston baked beans. Well, that would be BBB, coach Spence.com, Spence the Spence. Uh, instead, he is not coaching about beans or basketball or baseball or beach balls. Oh my God, what if he's a beach ball coach? What would you coach with a beach ball? Would you coach how to hit it at a concert or would you coach how to inflate it? How hard is it to coach how to inflate it? I'll tell you what. That's got to be a fetish porn site somewhere, right? Just women blowing up beach balls fucking naked. Oh, my God. If it's not, bbcoachspence.com. You got to get on the fucking ball. You got to do that right now. You know what? Beachballcoachspence.com. Just start filming hot girls in bikinis blowing up fucking beach balls and put it out on a tumbler somewhere. But there's no money in that. You know where the money is? bbcoachspence.com. You know why? Because here's what he's selling you, folks. He's not selling you anything. I guess he sort of is. I don't know. When I heard the idea, I was like, I, t I even said to him, Look, I like Spence. Spence the sponsor is a good guy, and I like the fact that he stepped up to the forefront with a handful of goddamn nickels for me, but I got to be honest, I'm not so sure if I can help him here. So you guys need to rally behind bbcoachspence.com to show him that this was a good idea because he was fucking persistent. I mean, he would not leave me the fuck alone about this. He's just like, dude, take this money. Take this goddamn money. Follow me around and just throwing nickels at me like I was a goddamn fucking internet hobo. And I'm not an internet hobo. I don't have holes in my shoes. There's not toes sticking out of my fucking socks. I don't have a fucking tramp face. I'm not hopping on an internet train and skipping a ride off the fucking Raleigh. I am a normal person, guys. God damn it. You don't have to follow me around and throw goddamn nickels at me, Coach Spence Spence. <clears throat> BBCoachSpence.com. So, Mike, and he gives me his life story, which also, by the way, Spence, no offense. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, your life started when you sat down to type me letters and never stopped. That's that, You were formed out of sheer frustration because you were somebody who types letters and doesn't get responses. So you were just a creature born out of pure frustration, made out of pure thin air and sweat. <laughs> Speaking of sweat, go to BBCoachSpence.com. And learn all about sweating because that's what he does. He sells sweat. He sells jugs of sweat. <laughs> he goes around and he fucking he, he he just has fat people sweat into a bin and then he collects it and he sells it off as some sort of like funky cologne. That would be perfect. What is that from? That's from a show. Wasn't there a thing where guys were like fat guys were sweating and they were catching their sweat and they were selling it somewhere and they were bottling it? I remember it was gross because it was in like a see-through bottle. It was all like misty and cloudy. It's from a comedy sketch or something somewhere or in a movie. It was like fat people were sweating and they were harvesting their sweat. Yeah, it was disgusting. I agree. Uh, bbcoachspence.com I'm going to read you his life story because apparently he felt that he needed to send it to me I got news for you you give me the money I don't need the fucking life story whatever the fuck you send the money and I'll just go ahead and say whatever the fuck you want me to I don't need some fucking truthful bullshit about you and some heartfelt nonsense just tell me the website and give me the cash and I will make it work uh, he said four hours into a show he was supposed to fucking talk about early alright so <laughs> My guy was 30-something pounds overweight two years ago at age 40. Now, I got something to say to you right now. 30-something pounds overweight two years ago at age 40? Fucking amateur. Because when I was 40, I was 300 pounds overweight. That seems high. No, actually, actually, it's not. I was, was I five bills at 40? No, I was five bills at 35. Eh, I was still 140 pounds overweight. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what maybe we need? Maybe we need bbcoachmike.com. Uh-huh. All right, so he was 30-something pounds overweight two years ago at the age of 40. He was kind of going to the gym two days a week using an old routine, um, which means he was doing Robert Klein's jokes. He was, at, he was at a machine, and he was doing old comedy routines from David Brenner. Uh, he didn't have any real results. He kept hearing about P90X. A buddy of his got him to join in a challenge group on Facebook. Uh, and you know how that friend got him to join? 
by consistently writing him letters on Facebook that he never answered. And then finally, <laughs> finally he caved in and said, you know what, I will join your fucking challenge group. Fine, I will do it. I'm very familiar with that sort of behavior. Uh, and here, and this is my favorite part. Long story short, really, BB Coach Spence? We're already about four fucking sentences into a long story. I don't think it's short at all, at all. I worked a different part of my body daily, kept motivated by the encouragement of others in my challenge. Now I can tell you, I also work a different part of my body daily, but I don't think that's for any sort of discussion we would need here, sir. Oh my God. Uh, the pounds started dropping. I followed their nutrition program to some degree. Still drank a few or more beers each week. Now this is fucking weird. He capitalized beers. I don't know why. Uh, because it's normally written, there's grammar, but he somehow he capitalized beers. I think he feels that beers is a, it's a, it's a proper name of some sort. I don't know. What if, is there a beers brand beers? If there is, I've invented a proper way to drink it. You drink it, yes. you go, ah, and you throw a sideways glance. I will demonstrate that for you when I'm on the road this summer. You guys come up to me, give me a beer, I'll demonstrate it. Everybody buy me beer this summer. What if I become an alcoholic? How horrible would that be? And then Bob Pop and Chinese Rick watch Night of the Living Dead, and I stand there and I go, yep, they shot the spade. I fucking crack a beer. <laughs> All right. Uh, he replaced one meal a day with Shakeology. I don't know why you would drink a Prince album, but good for you. Uh, wow, really? I got the groan out of you? God damn it. Uh, that wasn't bad musicology right at the top. All right, so. Uh, he went from overweight dad to a fit dad. Uh, and now we go into bullet points. I became a coach soon after to share my success and to help others. Helping others motivates me to stick with my workouts. Now here's the meat of it, folks. Here's why... Spence, the sponsor, sent me 47 emails over the course of four years. I invite all the 40-year-old boy listeners to join my P90X, P90X2, P90X3 challenge group in May. P90X3 is only 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes, folks. You can do six P90Xs listening to last week's show alone. You could do P90X, P90X2, P90X3, P90X4, P90X5, P90X6, and still have 10 minutes left to towel off. <laughs> it's only 30 minutes a day. And I, I have to be honest with you, I, I've never understood. I mean, I understand it because it plays upon the psyche of people who want to lose weight quickly and don't want to put any effort into it. Uh, it happens all the time when people are like, oh, dude, like you could totally take this pill and lose five pounds in a week. And then you only have to work out for like five minutes a day and have a refreshing shake for dinner or whatever the fuck. And it's like, dude, no, why don't you just stop eating like a fucking dumbass and get up and run? Just do that. Go run. Or do P90X3 from bbcoachspence.com because it's fantastic. It's a great deal. And he paid me to say so. All right. So uh, don't just run. You know what? Get up. And, uh, and, and run to your computer and sign up for bbcoachspence.com because he is going to coach you in May and everybody's going to get together. And I'm going to tell you this, bbcoachspence.com, if we can get all of you guys involved, however many people can get involved in signing up, uh, Spence the Spence has pledged to donate $5 for every pound lost to this show in May. So if I can get a hundred of you to sign up and all of you lose five pounds, that's 500 pounds. And he's going to donate five bucks a pound. That's $2,500 just for the month of May that BB coach Spence is going to donate. <laughs> Spence, the sponsor is coming through with his huge cash, man. Look at the fucking, I can't believe he's going to do it. It's amazing that he's made this pledge, but if I can get a hundred of you to sign up for P90X and lose weight and keep track, cause we got to weigh in. We got to make this a real thing. We got to make this happen. And, uh, and Spence, the sponsor, said, I will give $5 a pound for every pound lost in the month of May. Dudes, look at the bank we're going to make. Look at the loop we're going to make. I may even jump in and lose 30 myself just to make 150 bucks. <laughs> if after being in my challenge group, you decide you love the programs, you can join Spence's team as a coach and get paid to work out. Now, I got to be honest with you, five bucks a pound already sounds like we're all getting paid to work out, but that's fine. He handles it the way he wants. BBCoachSpence.com is his retail site. You can purchase a P90X3 challenge pack, and he's going to get you signed up in his challenge group right away. Uh, it's BBCoachSpence.com. You can also find him on Facebook at BBCoachSpence on Facebook. Just search that BBCoachSpence, S-P-E-N-C-E -E, on Facebook. And he's also on Twitter, at BBCoachSpence. And it's BB, just the letter B, the letter B, not B-E-E, -E, B -E -E, or any of that nonsense. So it's at BBCoachSpence on Twitter. So he's BBCoachSpence.com, B at BBCoachSpence on Twitter, and BBCoachSpence on Facebook. And uh, 
remember, if you join in the month of May, all 40 year old boy listeners, for every pound lost, Spence the Spence is going to donate $5 to this show. <laughs> $5 for every pound's lost. We, we've got to get you to weigh in, of course. We've got to do that. We got the calipers out. We got to check your body fat. We got to check your arm fat. But, uh, but don't you want to help this show and help yourselves in the process? Don't you want to get a beach body like Coach Spence? <laughs> Spence the Spence? Because that's what the BB stands for, folks. Beach body. And as your team beach body coach, he can help you achieve an all new beach body with the challenge packs. And I know some of you out there are thinking to yourselves, well, fuck, I already have an awesome beach body. Yes, but it can always be better. It can always be better because you know why? There's always better beaches. Don't you want a better beach body? I think you do. And don't you want to give five bucks a pound to this goddamn show? Yes, you do. So you want to step right up. And I'll tell you what. I have no idea why anybody in the world would donate money to a show to make people do push-ups. It makes no fucking sense. <laughs> and I'll tell you, yes, that's why I tried to talk him out of donating. That's why I tried to talk him out of sponsoring the goddamn show. I said to him, dude, I don't, I don't kind of get this. I mean, like, literally, you basically are paying money to get people to do leg lifts with you on the internet. And that sounds like a fetish. That doesn't sound like any sort of business. It does. It sounds like a fetish, right? He's like, hey, I will give you money if you can convince people to do fucking arm lifts with me. Right, fuck, arm lifts? The fuck are arm lifts? I just made up a goddamn exercise. Leave it in. Leave it in. There's no such thing as a fucking arm lift. Yes, you do. No, there's, those are shoulder presses. Or fucking, yeah, there, there's a different name than arm lift. I mean, I do an arm lift all day goddamn long. Huh? I call them arm lifts. Don't call them that. You know who's angry at you for that? Well, BB Coach Spence. There's pull downs and then there's there's fucking these are this is uh and these are flies you can do flies right there and fucking fix your arm yeah they're not they're not arm lifts there's no such thing as an arm lift you know what an arm lift is and that was the that was the early name for a dumb waiter because you had to fucking get in there and you had to use your arms to pull yourself up in that tiny little elevator and get over to the fucking place and deliver the wine to the fucking speakeasy uh but bbcoachspence.com is where you need to go and again i like i said i didn't understand the guy i'm like dude really you want to convince people to do push-ups with you on the fucking internet that just seems weird and i don't know why you'd want to throw money at it and he's like dude it'll be great we'll get a challenge group going and i'm like i look forward to never hearing from you again fantastic um but yeah so again he it worked for him and I'll, I'll tell you what i can tell you it worked for him because he has a uh like a three paneled photo of like when he looked like when he was all doughy and then in the middle when he's like sort of not doughy and now when he looks like he could beat the shit out of everybody in the world, like that sort of thing where he's like, you know, and, and, and he, of course he did the trick where he's like, uh, yeah, I'm sad in the doughy picture. And then, uh, man, this is me and I'm making some improvements. And then the third one, he's just like, yeah, who the fuck wants to fight me in the shower? Like it's the weirdest picture of all time. Like he's like, cause he's in a tiled room, like a tiled bathroom. Cause he's not, I, I, it's kind of a small picture. I mean, it could be somewhere else, maybe somewhere else. Maybe he's in a garage. That's what it looks like. If you look at these pictures, it's just like, oh my God, I totally need to get into shape. And then he's like, hey man, I'm sort of in shape. And then he's like, who wants to get punched in the face while a stream of hot water hits you in the back? Everybody, right? Somebody step right up. It's, he went, it's because it starts out and he's just like, dude, here I am in the mechanic. He's like the Christian Bale of fucking beach bodies. He's like, oh, I'm in the mechanic. In the center one, he's like, dude, I like this. I actually like this, this Bale use of measurement. That's fucking perfect. You know what? That's what the BB means. It's like beach Bale. He's not even beach body. He's beach Bale coach Spence.com. That's fucking perfect. BB coach Spence.com is beach Bale because on the first panel, he's like, dude, I'm totally Bale from the mechanic. And the second one, he's like, eh, I'm Bale from the fighter. Like I'm kind of like there, but I'm sort of a drug addict maybe. And in the third one, he's just straight up Bale from American Psycho. He is just... <laughs> He is hip to be fucking square, and he will take you on, goddammit. He looks like he's just ready to film Eastern Promises right there in his house and have a fucking nude fist fight in a steam room. Let's do this. That's what fucking Coach Spetch the Spence wants. That's all he wants. Look, there's nothing wrong with sending money to a podcast to convince people to wrestle you naked in the shower. I think it's a great plan. Good for you, Spence the Spence. So go to bbcoachspence.com uh, or go to Twitter at bbcoachspence. And uh, you can go to BB Coach Spence on Facebook and search him out. And uh, like I said, all 40 year boy listeners, we've got two weeks to get together as a group, join his challenge group in May, because Spence the Spence from Beach Bale, CoachSpence.com, with his American psycho physique has gone completely American Psycho with his bank book and has offered to donate $5 a pound lost from every 40-year-old boy listener who joins up with him. Do you know how long that's going to take? Just the month of May. And we're going to lose all this weight and we're going to get all this cash and it's going to be amazing. I'm going to surf it. I'm going to ride it. And then me and BB Coach Spence are going to ride off into the sunset on the beach with our beach bales. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Uh, by the way, some of the stuff I've said might not be true, but who cares? I will leave it to you to parse out what is true and what is not true.
But I can tell you the only real reason I took on Spence the Spons because of the BB. Because the bees are prevalent in this show. We need bees. I need more bees. I need two more bees to make this a complete show. I think I like Spence the Spons. I think that's going to be my new, like, fucking weird DJ name if I have to have one. Or if I, you know what? That'll be my fake name if I order food. Oh, dude! We fucking forgot to talk about that! I should have done it before the sponsor. God damn it. Uh, it doesn't matter, I guess. I saw, I saw whatever. I was delivering food the other day. Let's talk about this. Uh, I, let's finish this because I didn't I start this. I started this, right? She did. <laughs> okay. Um, that's awesome, though, that I fucking stumbled into it because I, I was going to completely forget about that. And then people would have been like, dude, what's that fucking thing that you did with the fake name? And I'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, because already people are like writing me stuff and they're like, dude, are you going to give away Karen's stuff? Like, I love, dude, you guys are great. Again, like I said, everybody pays attention to me and they think that what I say I'm going to do, like in some weird way. They're like, dude, are you really going to have a yard sale and give away all of Karen's stuff and have a Kickstarter? And I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm probably not. But do you think I should? And everybody's like, yes, you should. Uh, our friend Nicole is like, what? You put this stuff online and we'll buy it. Like, it'll be awesome. And then part of me is just like, I'm not the Fred Sanford of podcast. I think that's fucking horrible I think you know I'm just fucking me and I mean certainly Rollo lives with next door to me with a goat I mean that certainly happens I know it's Luis with the goat right Rollo doesn't have a goat I have no idea dude Rollo it's funny when you watch Sanford and Son Sanford and Son is like you know it's Fred Sanford and then of course Son which is Demond Wilson and then there's Grady who's all bent over and fucking weird looking and then Luis is there and he's got a goat and then the cops show up and then there's that fat dude who also works at the junkyard but then there's Rollo dude Rollo is like Demond Wilson's friend he's Lamont's friend Rollo is, is like always really sharply dressed. Whenever I would see Rollo, because at the same time I was watching like the Cosby Kids, and I always thought Rollo was Rudy. Like I literally thought that Rudy from the Cosby Kids was based on Rollo from Sanford and Son because they always kind of looked the same, except they didn't have a newsy cap. Sometimes they had a newsy cap on. And in the cartoon, Rudy's always got the newsy cap on because, uh, let's face it, he's drawn. I mean, the fucking lazy animators aren't going to draw him without a cap because you got to know who Rudy is because there's like 47 dudes in the fucking Cosby Kids. And so that's why one carries a radiator, one has a big mouth, one's super fat, and one wears a newsy cap. That's why you got to do it. You got to fucking sort those dudes out you can't just go oh yeah remember that's rudy and you go which one is rudy no that's mushmouth no that's bucky no that's <laughs> bill i'm gonna say them all that's stupid <laughs> no that's bill no that's fat albert and when i would watch the show all the time because i tell you this i saw the cosby kids and i would see rudy and the first time i watched sanford and son and rollo walked in i went hey 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 that's rudy <laughs> but it was really rollo Listen, if you don't love me, if you didn't love me before, you have to love me after that on the fly, hey, 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 right? Uh, is it stupid to explain all my silly nonsense? I mean, I don't know. I like doing it. I like talking about it. Well, because you work at the top of your intelligence. I'm just, I'm a gutter snipe. Um, <laughs> well, then. I like a smart vagina. Well, I, dude, I, well, the Cosby Kids are fucking awesome because it's like when you would watch it. Because Rudy also, that's another thing. Is the Cosby Kids, they had, you had to tell them apart. And like, uh, Fat Albert had like this amazing singing voice. Like, why did he talk like he had cancer in his throat? But then when he would sing, he just like a crazy bird. He's like Jim Neighbors. Fucking Fat Albert's like the Jim Neighbors of cartoons. Like, because he's like, a, hey, hey, hey. And then he sings awesomely. Um, and then Rudy had an electric guitar. I don't know where he plugged it in in the fucking junkyard. I think I, I feel like I may have talked about this before because it's puzzled me my entire life. I may have brought this up in a previous show because I'll tell you what, I don't know why Rudy had a fucking electric guitar and fucking Russell had to play a goddamn radiator with a spoon. God damn it, Rudy, hook a brother up. Uh, <laughs> we'll have some fun now with me and all the gang learning about each other. <laughs> so stupid. I want to do the whole song and I'm making myself stop. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. That's the message of this show. That's the message of all shows. That's the message of all podcasts. We're going to have a good time and we're going to have some fun and, you know, stick around because you might learn something before it's done. Uh, <laughs> uh, God, I just, it's just stupid, right? It's stupid at this point. If you could see Lolita just sitting back with her arms crossed, furious. <laughs> so I get this order and it's a fake name. And I know it's a fake name, um, but I don't know if anybody else in the shop did. Nobody noticed really. But in my head, I'm going, all right, well, what's going to happen here? Because I've delivered to celebrities. I've gone all over the place and seen people. And, uh, you know, we, we, and we get celebrities eating there all the time. I mean, they just come in and they, they love the place. So it's always kind of a mystery. I will, uh, you know, I'll see names of people and I recognize them. Like, I, you know, there's we delivered to like a really big producer. There's all sorts of stuff. So when I saw the fake name, though, I go, all right, something's up here. Uh, and it was in, in the morning. And I took the order, and uh, it was to a house, and it was behind a big, huge gate. So I'm like, all right, something's up. Um, and I buzzed the buzzer, 
and they, you know, the person lets me in, and I knock on the door, and a uh, gigantic wooden door opens up, and there's Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which, what I will tell you is funny, if he wasn't famous and he gave his name, you would think that was a fake name when you went to deliver the food. <laughs> Um, but he is extremely well known. And I will tell you this, uh, Zach is a friend of mine. So I've worked with him many times doing comedy here in town. Uh, and it's, I always say this, all right. Like I say, Mark Marin is a friend. Um, but Mark Marin has walked past me and not said anything, but then he recognized me in the next minute. You know what I mean? When he walked back and he went, Hey, hi. And he, he knew who I was. And then when he saw me at the, the pod fest last October, he knew who I was the whole time. Um, Patton would know me if you went up to him and said hey you know mike schmidt he probably wouldn't know me but if he saw me he would go oh dude yeah you're the guy i put on the conan showcase because i think you're really funny and he likes one of my jokes so when i say these people are my friends i mean i've worked with them and they know who i am but at the same time i'm not arrogant or silly enough to think that they would know who the fuck i was if you went up to them and said hey you know mike schmidt from the pot pot and they would have no fucking idea who i was part would know but i mean like you know that's those guys because i know them as friends but name guys i've worked with would know me if they saw me like brian possein and people like that um I'm always pleasantly surprised when it happens, too. I will tell you that because I reintroduce myself all the time. So the door opens, and, and Zach is there, and I have his food, and I go, hey. And he goes, oh, hi. And I, I, he doesn't know me. And I was like, oh, that's okay. Uh, so I went to give him his food. I go, hey, Zach, Mike Schmidt. I'm, uh, and immediately when I talked, his eyes lit up, and he goes, and I, I wish I could show you his face because he just goes, Mike, oh, oh my God, where's the rest of you? And, uh, <laughs> and that made me laugh because, again, he has not seen me since, since I lost a ton of weight. Um, and I go, oh, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't bring it with me in the daytime. And he laughed and he goes, what, did you, what are you doing? And I go, I go, I've lost about 80 pounds. And he goes, that's fantastic. That's so great. How are you? And I said, I'm really good. Even though the fact that I'm bringing him barbecue indicates that maybe I'm not as good as I should be, really, when you think about it. Um, but that's all in my fucking head. Really, that's in my head. So uh, he goes, how are you? And I said, I'm great. I go, uh, I go, you're good. And he goes, oh, my God, I'm good. And he goes, I have a baby now. You want to see my son? And I'm like, I do. And he brings me in his house and he introduced me to his son. And, uh, and it was just, it was great because there, there was no, oh, awkwardness. There was no hurry up and get out of here. There was no, I know you, but this is strange. Um, he immediately welcomed me into his home as a friend, despite the fact that I was there in a professional capacity. And it was just, and he had tipped me. And it was just strange to do that. But, uh, but the fact that he wasn't going to let it be strange yeah. allowed me to not let it be strange at all. To not think and go into that shame spiral of fuck, I'm a failure and I'm bringing food to a friend. And none of that, none of that came into my head. None of it. Um, I, cause I, I just went, I'm, I'm good. And he said, that's great. Come on in. And he, he invited me into his house and he, you know, I met his baby and, and he could not have been more friendly or nice or accommodating. And I will say this, he's always been that way to me. Um, I worked with him one time at the UCB and I brought a, I had a little stick recorder, you know, like a little tiny stick recorder. And this is when I was taping my sets. And so I was taping my set and I left when I finished and I forgot it. And then he went on stage and he just picked up my stick recorder and talked into it the entire, and people knew what he was doing. And he kept saying, you know, progressively sillier and ridiculous things about me and talking. And he was saying it into my guy. I had no idea he's doing it in my recorder until I came out around the fucking curtain. And then I was like, people, he's killing. And, and people are like laughing. And I walk around the front and I see him. He's holding the stick recorder <laughs> like by the microphone talking into it. And so I fucking walked back through because the UCB has a door. So I walked back through the thing to the backstage and I knocked on the door. <laughs> and he goes, come in. And I open the door and I go, hi. And he just goes, oh, hi. And he just hands me the stick recorder and I fucking walked away. It was because, again, you, that's, it was fun. It was fucking fun because he's, he's so fun and he's incredibly funny and he's generous and nice and giving as a performer and as a person. And uh, he brought me into his home and I met his, his child. And then he was like, how are you? I said, good. And, uh, and I didn't ask how he was because I know how he's doing. But then I went, you're good. Everything's good. And he goes, everything's fine. And, I, and he goes, I'm so happy. And I, I said, good. I'm glad. I'm happy for you. And uh, he gave me a hug and I shook his hand. And then I, I walked out and I left. And uh, and I got in my car. And like I said, 
I've had moments where you've get that brief flash of embarrassment or you're you're disappointed or you're like, oh man, I could be that or I should be that or I should be more, I should be something, I should be something because I'm not anything. And you you wind up going into this spiral where you convince yourself that you're not worth anything and you're frustrated and you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what you've done and you know the mistakes you've made and you've settled and you've gone ahead and fucked all that up. And you know what? None of that was there. I, I, I bled none of it. I sweat none of it. I wanted to be, I did not want to be angry at all. And I think that's, that's toward getting better. That's toward fixing who I am and toward trying not to be upset because that's what I've been trying to be doing. You know, because I normally I said I would be, I would consider myself a failure. And I had seen somebody who I had worked with in a professional capacity in a completely different situation, and I felt stupid, and I would feel small, and I would feel less than. But you know what? I'm not. I'm not small, and I'm not stupid, and I'm not less than because, regardless of the situation I find myself in, I have never been happier in my life than I am right now, ever. And I owe it to you guys. You know, this show uh, allows me to do the things that I want to do in a professional capacity. I get to come here once a week and be me. Regardless of what I have to do the other six and a half days of the fucking week, I can come here every Wednesday and Lily allows me to be me. And David allows me to be me. And you guys indulge me and allow me to be me. All of you. You listen. You contribute. You buy things. You come to see me live. You write letters of encouragement. You sponsor the fucking show. And it makes me happy. And after six years of doing a show that I, you know, in the beginning, I read off a fucking script for 20 minutes and I never knew where it was going to go. I didn't know what it was going to be. And I knew exactly what Mark Maron was talking about when he said, you know what? You don't know how liberating it is to talk into a microphone by yourself until you do it. And you realize you can hold people's attention and you realize that people like you and people care and people want to hear from you. And I get that from you every goddamn week. And whenever it comes to the end of a season, I always think to myself, you know what? Year six is the end. Year five is the end. I don't know if I can do this again because, you know, I, fucking put some sort of weird import on it and I tell myself you know what it's really difficult to do it but the fucking bottom line is and I've said this before and I'll say it again I will never stop doing this ever year seven happens in two weeks absolutely because I can't stop doing this it is the avenue I have to reach people who enjoy what I do it is the avenue I have to realize that what I have to offer is worth something and that I matter and I found out this year that I'm valuable I found out this year that people will rally behind me in the darkest of circumstances and to know that I have that many people out there who are looking out for me and I'm talking groups and I'm talking individuals because this show not only has brought me into contact with all of you as a group but it's brought me into contact with so many of you who are special individuals who have helped me who have stepped up and have taken care of me and who love me and that makes me incredibly happy and incredibly lucky and I tease all the time at the end of the years when I think to myself, you know, I can't do this again or I shouldn't do this again or I won't do this again. And I think, you know, maybe this is the time to end it. But I think my mom said it best. The kid just won't shut up. <laughs> you guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy. You can follow me at twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can get our friend David Hernandez at facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. And uh, if you'd like him to do some artwork for you, you can find him at artbydmh.com, A R T B Y D M H dot com. He does amazing work. Go check out everything that he's done and see what he can do for you. Our friend Lily Von Stupp is the producer of this show, and she is my de facto therapist, my accountant, my tax person, my lawyer. She has all of the things that I need to survive. Uh, you can find her at twitter.com slash Lily Von Stupp, twitter.com slash MNTs, and twitter.com slash HollywoodBQFest. You can be her friend at facebook.com slash Lily Von Stupp. And if you'd like to write her a personal note and find out how you too can get on the list of performers that she'll never work with again, you can write her at Lily at burlesque411.com. That's Lily, L I L I, at burlesque411.com. Yeah. Yeah.
to remind you folks about the Monday Night Tees every Monday night at the three clubs on Santa Monica and Vine. An amazing show. It's the longest running, the hottest, the most stupendous burlesque show in the history of Los Angeles. I have another producer of that show. She's a sometime performer in that show as well. She is a host of that show. She is a pickup performer. She is a dancer. She's a romancer. She's a Capricorn and I'm a Cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend, one of my best friends, Lily Von Stupp. How are you, Lily? <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. I'm good. You're still scoffing. I heard you scoffing a second ago. Yeah, just scoffing. scoffing with screwdriver. Uh, here's something I will share with you folks. Every uh, every week I come here, there's a uh, there's a naked portrait of Lily here in the kitchen uh, where we do the show in the stripper's kitchen. And it is up on a uh, shelf. It's just above the control board, the sound board. Lily sits across from me. And, um, you know, she's, she's naked in the portrait. So uh, the thing is, there's a light shining on it. So I was sitting here just a second ago, and I'm trying, this is sad to admit it, but she asked me what I was doing, and I didn't tell her, but now I'll tell her now because we're on the air. Uh, I was moving my head because the light bulb keeps washing out whatever her vagina, like the area where her vagina is. So I wanted to see the painting of her vagina. So I, I actually leaned to try to dis, uh, get the glare. I was like, get the glare off of here and get the glare, because I was trying to get the glare to go away so I could actually see it. Because I've always glanced over at it and never really taken a, you know, a serious look at it. And so I was like, well, okay, well, I'll look. And so I, I couldn't see it, so I tried to shift my head so I could... Uh, uh, get the glare off your vagina. That's what I was doing. And did you notice that even as you shifted, my vagina just glares? Well, you're, and also, it just, it followed me with its eyes as if I were in a haunted house. <laughs> oh, I'm waiting for Scooby and the Mystery Sheen to come up and f figure out the mystery of your vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I said Mystery Sheen. Ruh, ruh. You know what? Your, your vagina has a Mystery Sheen, actually. <laughs> that's the glare. That's where the glare comes from. Um, Holy shit. That, so that's what I was doing. How are you? All right. Yes, you are. And still here. That it does. Uh, how was the show this week? There was a big Fantastic. Michael Jackson tribute show. Great. Uh, and I almost hosted. I was, I was almost called into emergency duty. Uh, but then, unfortunately, uh, I did not get to be involved because you, you well. You talked me out of booking you again. But here's what I will tell you. Now, don't listen to me, first of all, ever. Because I no. said, no, here's what I, I said. You said, if you really need me, I'll host. Right. And What's I'm wrong like, with that? Well, yes. Oh, okay, well, um, I could kind of do it if I had to myself, even if I'm sick. All right. Well, but I, I, what I was saying to you is if you needed... It sounds like you had any interest at all in doing it, but if I was in a pinch, you know... But I still would have been great. over and give me a sympathy fuck. Oh, That's stop that. Fun. Well, I apologize if I gave you that idea. I did not mean to do that. I, I was not... Uh, well, no, I was not... I would have done it to help you, but it wasn't like I was like, oh, man, I can't wait to do this. Well, then let's book me. Let's book me for something. I have apathy about doing a show. Yeah. Because I can just do it myself. Well, see, but that's, that blows, and I feel bad because I, I thought I left you in a lurch. I just wasn't feeling well, but my right. up, but it was okay. But then I felt terrible about it, like I'd left you in a okay. lurch, and I did not mean to do that. All good. Um, but let's book me for a show, then. Well, it's funny you should say that because every time I tried, you would always be like, oh, book other people. They're better for this than me. I well, they are, better. and and I talk you out of it, but now I owe you. I feel that I owe you, and I want You're to do it. Dead. Well, but I want to, well, that's exactly what I owe you. No, you owe me nothing. But I want to do it. Mm-hmm. So I can't get booked? No, fuck it. Not after that. Okay. <laughs> uh, cool. Speaking of performers, performers, I'll never be working with I am again. top of the list. Uh, all right. Well, I'm glad the show went well on Monday. I'm sorry that I missed it. I'm sorry that I, I bailed on you. I should have hosted, I guess. Uh, and then this week, uh, who's on the show? Is it a fun show, an well, exciting show? Stafford. Exciting. Plenty of shows, plenty of dancers. Russell Bruner will be the headliner. He's great. And uh, and with uh, just, <laughs> never mind. Uh, I won't say it. Uh, well, good. I'm glad he's going to be here. That's going to be fantastic. Russell's great. Uh, Snapper and Buddy are good friends. And so everything should be fine and everything's going to be fun. And you can go to Facebook.com slash Monday Night Tees and join that fan page and find out about all the performers when they're booked and when they're going to be coming to town. You will get previews weeks in advance. Sometimes you will find out about surprise guests. There's all sorts of information to be had at Facebook.com slash Monday Night Tees. You can always go to brownpapertickets.com and search for Lily Von Stupp or Monday Night Tees and get tickets for those shows when they are coming up in the future.
uh, or in the past. You can buy tickets for past shows. That's pretty cool. Lily gets the money and you don't get to see it, but it's good. Lily gets the cash either way. Um, so brown paper tickets, go to facebook.com slash Monday Night Tees and join there and get all of the information that's coming up and all of the people that are there. Follow Lily on Twitter and, and be her friend on Facebook and all of that cool stuff so you will find out all of the shows that are coming up. And also, you will keep abreast of the Hollywood Burlesque Festival, which is at facebook.com slash Hollywood Burlesque Festival. And you can find out about all that stuff. Now, you have another show that you're booking. Is that an open to the public type of deal or is that not? Okay, it's a private show. All right, so I cannot plug that show. Okay. Please remember that Lily has the Burlesque Podcast. Is that what it's called? The Burlesque Podcast? Yeah. The Burlesque Podcast is available right now in iTunes. Uh, she talked with Russell Bruner. That was uh, up there. Have you put the, uh, the archives up yet or no? Uh, not additional ones. There's about 15 or 16 episodes up right now. And the newest one was Sheila Starcy on the show. She's Miss Hollywood Burlesque. She is. So go ahead and get that and listen to her talking. Uh, and I've talked about Sheila Starciani on here. And uh, I, will you be doing those with great frequency, one a week, one every two weeks? Uh, first and the 15th. Terrific. Uh, so it's like a paycheck. Folks, if you want to go ahead and get direct deposit, that's what it's like. It's a paycheck that will get directly deposited into your iTunes. Directly deposited to Burlesque. So subscribe and get uh, d the Burlesque directly deposited into your iTunes. And listen to Lily, who is... Uh, uh, really just smart and brilliant and a, a wonderful friend and she doesn't get to show verbally who she is here but she's fucking crack smart and does really well in that show so please uh, give it a listen hear her talk to performers hear her talk to friends and hear her share her knowledge on an ancient art that not a lot of people know a lot about but Lily loves and desires and wants to tell you all about so please check out the burlesque podcast I don't know if she, you don't desire it but you love it and you uh, you hold it in great regard you revere it I would say you revere it. You revere the old people, you the, the older performers, and you revere the history of it. You just love the art form. Uh, terrific. So please, find the Blessed Podcast in iTunes and go ahead and subscribe. Uh, you guys can go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com and go to the Joe Business page. Oh, let me tell you this real quick. I'm on Jordan Jesse Go this week. I think I alluded to it earlier in the show. I may have mentioned it. Uh, but you can find Jordan Jesse Go. You can find it in iTunes. Go ahead and search it there. You can go to MaximumFun.org and comment on the show in the forums. And uh, they've got all sorts of shows over there that you can check out. But my thanks to Jesse Thorne and Jordan Morris for having me uh, on the show. And we had a great time. It was just... It's funny, people ask me what the show is. I go, well, it's basically Jordan and Jesse's uh, talk show, like where you just get to come in and have a fun conversation. It's not an interview. You just kind of hang out and have a good time. And I had a great time with those guys. It was nice. Uh, then I, I haven't been on in over a year, I think it was. Um, but it was good to do it. So go find Jordan Jesse Go in iTunes. I had a good time and uh, check it out, download it, and enjoy it and, and hear us all having fun in a box. It was like a fucking weird. Their studio is in it's in a building and then they you get into the actual office space and then they have a, a fucking studio that you sit in it's all like egg crated and and microphones and dude it was i mean it's professional um so good for them uh i can't afford any egg crate cratings or cartons i could talk into an egg carton i probably wouldn't do any good <laughs> uh go to mikeschmidtcomedy.com and go to the joe business page and if you are there, please, uh, we have all sorts of stuff for sale. We have the dirt, dirt, dirt shirt, which is available. We have the Big Angry CD, which I will send to you with a tracking number, and I will make sure to be able to find it if it gets lost in the mail. So Sabrina from Santa Rosa, if you did not get it, is, my point is, let me know, and I will be happy to send a different one. Uh, but I'm assuming you got it, right? You're close to my house. Uh, so the Big Angry CD is there. The Schmitty Comes Alive download is available, which Sabrina also bought that. Thank you so much, Sabrina. Um, there's the For the Life of Schmitty download, which is from last year's interlude, and I will talk about that in just a second. We have Year 1, Year 2, Year 3, Year 4, and Year 5 of this podcast available uh, in iTunes, right? Uh, no, not in iTunes. I apologize. Year 1, Year 2, Year 3, Year 4, Year 5 of this podcast available for purchase at, uh, at the Joe Business page on MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You can buy them individually. Or you can buy them as the UN of Evil box set. And I will tell you, uh, you've got two weeks left to buy the UN of Evil box set. Um, and then after that, it's going to be something else. I don't know what it is yet. We haven't figured out the new theme for, uh, for next year. We're still deciding what it will be. But it's the UN of Evil box set now. And then we're putting it together to see what it will be going forward. But year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five are available now individually or as the UN of Evil box set. Pick those up now. Uh, also, tweakedaudio.com slash 40 is a great sponsor of this show, and I appreciate all of their support over the six years. Uh, they jumped in, might have jumped in in year one, maybe in year two. I don't remember when, but it doesn't matter. As far as I'm concerned, they've been on board the whole time because they've been very, very good to me. So thank you, Bruce. I appreciate you sponsoring this show for as long as you have. Hopefully, you will continue into the future. Uh, or you won't. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I haven't talked to Bruce in a while. <laughs> How weird is that? I think I just set fire to a bridge. Um, so tweakedaudio.com slash 40, the dirt, dirt, dirt shirt, 
the Big Angry CD. All of the download sets are available. Artwork for this show is available. Uh, and, you know, there's a gentleman in Australia who we owe artwork to, and I'm going to refund his money because I just I, it's, I can't send it to him. And I, I don't even know why I'm telling you guys this. I should just send him a private email. But why am I reaching out? Because now it saves me typing. My fingers are now saved. Um, so that's that's that. It's like $45 to send it. And he, he bought it online, and I didn't have an international button. So he paid $25, which is great because that's what we're charging for it. But then to ship it, I already checked, and it was, it was $38 or $45. And I was just like, well, that's... So why don't you just write him and say, I need to get more money to ship it? I can do that and ask him, I suppose. But, I mean, it's, it just seems like such a hassle. If I could just push a button and give him his money back, and I mean, he'd feel much better about it. And also, I'm worried about shipping artwork overseas. Because, again, you know, that's a fucking nation of convicts down there. They're going to get it and tear it apart. I don't want a wild dingo to tear about the artwork. This guy spent good money on it. All of a sudden, a fucking kangaroo is going to hop on it and fucking ruin it. That's not good. You can't send shit to Australia. There's fucking kangaroos stepping on shit at the goddamn airport. That's terrible. i got to be named in that lawsuit, right? Somebody down there buys something, I ship it to him, the guy goes to grab it, and he gets bit by a joey. You don't want to get bit by a joey. That's fucking terrible, because you never see it coming. There's a kangaroo standing there. It doesn't make any sudden movements, but you reach across to grab the envelope, and a joey pops his head out of the pouch and bites you right in the goddamn arm. Plus, I have a long-standing beef with koalas. <laughs> Look, I send stuff to Australia, and all of a sudden, an aborigine steals it out of your mailbox and throws it into a fire. I don't want that. So, perhaps I'll write him and see what he thinks. He's a good person. He may have even stopped listening to the show. He may, this was in like, you know, he may have forgotten he bought it. I have no idea. Because he's been very nice. He hasn't yelled at me about it, you know, so who knows. But I'll write him. He's a very cool guy. Um, what would you say? People don't yell. I would. I yelled at Kit Kats earlier. Uh, <laughs> there's a theme where I'm mad at all candy except for good candy. Um, which is Hershey's. Hershey's the only good candy. License plate of chocolate. Um, so at the page, oh, and also dudes, you can go through the Amazon portal. Uh, if you go through the Amazon portal and you get to the other side, you and Kurt Russell can fight an alien. I think that's how it works. Uh, th th use my Amazon portal and then shop through like my shop and buy Amazon stuff. Then we get credit for it. That's pretty cool. Um, I can tell you this, don't buy any take five bars from Nermal or whatever the fuck his name was. Yeah, buy Garfield's little kitten son or whatever the fuck. No, it was Nimmel, I don't know, whatever the fuck. Take five bars from a guy in Vegas, don't buy them because you'll get fucking Kit Kats or Paydays. Nobody wants that. I want to take five. Do me a favor, take five and check the box. I said that earlier. Uh, so go ahead and use the Amazon portal and buy all that neat stuff. Now, there's some stuff to tell you here. Uh, remember that you can go be uh, Dave... Hernandez's friend, facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. It's not Dave, it's David. Um, Lily's familiar. How many times have you heard that sentence in your life? A lot. A lot. Uh, so if you go to facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez, you can be his friend. If you go to artbydmh.com, you can go ahead and buy artwork and uh, send him some stuff and he'll quote you and tell you exactly what he wants to do for you. But let's talk about next week. Uh, you know, David does all of the music for this show. He does all of the artwork for this show. If you take a look right now at your iPod and look, you'll see a little piece of artwork. You'll see a face. You'll see a painting. I'm not sure what it's going to be because, again, he and I have not spoken just yet, but I can tell you it's going to be amazing. Whatever it is that you're looking at, it's great. He does all of the artwork that we sell to everybody except for the people in Australia. He does unbelievable work, and I'm lucky to have him. He's a renaissance man. He can do basically fucking anything. And he is going to prove that to you next week with the interlude. Uh, I received it this week. And I, it's in my car, and I can't stop listening to it. Um, and I, I will tell you this. I went and worked on it with him, as you know. And I recorded my parts, and there's some things that I did. And then he said, oh, you know what? There's a few things that I haven't done yet that I plan on doing. And then, of course, he sends me the finished stuff. And the two things that he hadn't done yet are stunning. They're, they're, they're like, I went, dude, those are the two best things on the fucking album. And granted, maybe it's because I had already heard uh, what was going to be, what was coming, you know, on the interlude. But when he did these two other things, it just it made me sit up and go, oh, my Christ, they're just they're so great. Um, and you're th thinking, well, are you going to oversell this? I don't think it's possible to oversell what you're going to hear next week. Dave outdid himself with this year's interlude, and I am so proud of it, so proud that I wanted to just put it out. Like I just I was just going to again, as I've said, always I wanted to put out a preview of it. I would like to put out just a chunk of it as a preview or or anything because I you know I I love what I do I love this show and I and I love that you guys support it but then there comes a time where I'm fascinated by other things that I can't do and I can't play music I can't do those things so when I hear somebody who's so talented as it and and, and is so generous with his time and his talent as David I just want to share it with you right away so I keep listening to it and I think it's fucking amazing and I think you're gonna love it next week um, but I will tell you this like I said I want to put out a preview 
So David, unbeknownst to me, when we were doing the, uh, the interlude at his place when I was recording, he was taking a bunch of photographs and he has put together a video uh, to preview what you're going to be hearing next week. Now, some of you people listen to the show really early. I'm not putting up the video tonight, uh, which is Wednesday night, because Wednesday night I do my email and then I do the Facebook stuff. And uh, some of you listen to the show right away. Some of you on the other side of the world in another continent, in, in convict town down under. You guys listen quick. So I'm going to put this up probably tomorrow morning. And look, I, I reserve the right to change my fucking mind. I may just put it up because the thing is I work at double tomorrow, so I wouldn't be able to just put it up at my leisure. I would have to, uh, well, I, you know what? Actually, I wouldn't also be able to put it up at my leisure either. Uh, but I have to put it up at some point as a preview, and I want you to see it. And uh, it's going to go up tomorrow morning, I think, like uh, maybe around 9 o'clock West Coast time. And it's so stupid to fucking say that. It's not like the ball's dropping in Times Square. It's just something really cool and a preview of what you're going to get next week. So I may put it up tonight. I may put it up tomorrow morning. And uh, these are arbitrary times that are not going to mean anything to you if you listen to this in four days. So good for you. Enjoy it. Uh, but I can tell you that I was astonished by what David did this year and what he turned in. And I hope that you're going to like it as much as I do because I can't get it out of my head and I can't stop listening to it in the car. And I want to sing it to you. I want to tell you things all about it. I want to go ahead and go ahead and drop it in my I'm nobody. I'm baloney in pants. God damn it. Why do I think I'm somebody special? Why do I think I'm anybody interesting? I'm not. All I bring to the table is everything that everybody else does, but louder. <laughs> Don't hit snooze on me, motherfucker. I am a hilarious noise machine. I'm going to tell you this. You need to sit down and reevaluate your life if you can pull two midget Indian wrestlers out of your skull at any time. You know what? I don't even need you people here. Seriously, I do this. I love me. I don't give a fuck what you think, how you think. God damn it, I'm the greatest. I can't go for Schmidt. No, 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 can do. 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 No, can do.